On one hand, there is a 30 rock shaped hole in my heart ever since finishing the series yesterday. On the other, I'm incredibly happy because the Pokemon Coliseum stream was a success. We raised around $300 and I am incredibly grateful to everyone who came out and supported and just made it a good time because I don't think I would have been able to play for 11 and a half hours, roughly, not even, without your support. Yeah, I think the final total was 11 hours, 24 minutes, 26 seconds. So that'll be uploaded to YouTube at some point. But for now, it's on my Twitch if you want to go see it. And I got to say, the end is one of the funniest things that's happened to me in Pokemon. Rage-inducing would be another way to put it. Anyway, so before we get started, I have some more plugging to do, because I just love to plug. So, recently, I uploaded a video called Uncut Tyranitars, and the cast of that were my real-life buddies, because who else was I going to find to scream about Pokemon? So, we have a new channel called Movies with the Kids, where we watch really great movies and give our professional cinematic opinions on them. So we're just getting started here, but we also have a channel that's running for a couple of years now, which is mostly us just being incredibly silly. I'm sure it's a good time if you want to flip through some of these and f see my beautiful face as well as everyone else's. We're just a bunch of highbrow geniuses. That's the best way to put us. And yeah, look at that. There's my cowboy hat. Anyway, so yeah, check us out. It's a good time for when you want more of me and you are sick of the Pokemon. And I'm sure we'll, whenever I get back to the States, we're going to make some very beautiful art. I already have a great idea planned. Anyway, on to today's video, which is awesome. So I have always liked making teams. To me, it's just fun and relaxing and Oftentimes, I enjoy it more than actually playing the game, right? Uh, of course, you can't just be a great team builder without actually playing the game. I think actually playing the game helps you uh, understand how to make teams that work rather than just you know throwing together some stuff that looks nice on paper and just gets crushed in-game. So, a learning experience. I did a, an interview with Nathan Likes Chicken. And I go into that uh, in depth here if you want more of my ideas on that subject. So, uh, yeah, but basically this is not a team building lesson. This is just my history of team building. And these teams are very close to my heart, but I know I'm going to forget because there's just so many of them. But, you know, I've reconciled myself with that. And uh, they know that it doesn't mean I love them any less. I know I must sound demented, right? Talking about my attachment for Pokemon teams, but it's a very creative mode of expression, and, you know, you develop attachment to them. So, what can I say? I'm an emotional guy in my Clint Eastwood voice. Anyway, so I have logs, replays, threads, everything to accentuate this, but for the most part, we are going to be recreating them roughly in the team builder, you know, just the essentials. So, yeah, let's throw on the music and enjoy. So, my starting point, May, fuck off, 2009. I started lurking in competitive Pokemon for about a year and a half prior to this because I was not Kappa age, so you know, fall of 2007 I saw my first Wi-Fi battles and I started learning EVs and IVs and all that stuff. But it wasn't until May of 2009 that I turned 13 and technically April, but we didn't have the Wi-Fi set up until May. Uh, the router set up, because we had a modem before, didn't have that until May, so I didn't get my first battles in, but I had my first team already. I even reset my starter Piplup to be a modest Empoleon. So, and all I remember about my first battle against a user named Fab Doghouse 98 is that he led with a Yon Mega and my Specs and Polyon Hydro pumped it on the first turn. And I was a mess with EVs because I was doing it all manually and the excitement of playing outweighed the patience I would need to actually EV my stuff carefully, but you know, it didn't really matter. 
I just wanted to get out there and play, and I did pretty okay, and I think this was the set. Incidentally, Specs and Polyana is a great Pokemon now, but yeah. So, then the other Pokemon, Gliscor, because I was starting out on the right foot, and I think it had Stealth Rock, Earthquake, U-Turn, and I don't even remember the last, probably Roost, but it was a lax nature, because I think it was something like, I wanted plus defense, but I didn't have the patience to wait for Jolly, so I was like, whatever, I don't even care that I can't take special attacks, and it worked out, so, and, uh, I remember one game where it lived a Specs Alakazam Psychic from less than full, and I was like, who needs good natures? Anyway, speaking of bad special defense, I also had a Cloister with Spikes and Toxic Spikes, and I don't remember if the Spear Tomb was hacked somehow, or my special defense really was just that bad, or if it was Specs. But it got o code by a Spiritomb Dark Pulse in that first game. And I thought that was weird. But yeah, even from the beginning, I knew how powerful hazards were. I actually stumbled upon Toxic Spikes while playing Diamond in-game, when Gardenia's Roserade laid him down. And I was like, I wonder if two layers makes Toxic Poison. And I was right, and I was so proud. I miss being a 12-year-old. Anyway, so moving on to other great sets. I don't remember the items. But this was a Sword Zance, Ice Shard, Pursuit, Weavile. Who even knows what the last move was? But it was... Yeah. I remember one game where a guy brought a Rayquaza because, you know, Wi-Fi. And I just Ice Sharded it. Uh, here was a Shiny Gyarados. And I don't know what possessed me to give it this moveset. But I know that this was its moveset. Then, I don't even remember its nature or anything. Not Return. Worse. Roar. Rest Taunt. I think I was like, well, my Gera doesn't have the nature I want, so I'm not going to bother giving it any attacks. I'm just going to throw this monstrosity together. Yeah, so this first team was a massive success. Oh, and because I couldn't trade or Pokesav or anything, I had to use Flareon instead of Infernape because Flareon got Superpower in Platinum. Which I thought was like, oh, well, it's basically a mixape now. And who even knows what the last move was. And I named it Bow... Do I have a space? Yeah. Bow Wow Ow. That was the nickname. So, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, oh, I have many regrets in my life. And one of them is not preserving my old YouTube videos. Because otherwise this would be a true gem. But yeah, who even knows if the Eevees were right, but this was my surrogate Infernape before I could, you know, start action replaying to my, and Pogasaving to my full potential. So, uh, let's widen this up a little bit. And yeah, so that is my, I don't even remember the last move, but certainly wasn't anything too good. I think this was my in-game Flareon too in Platinum. So, yeah, off to a great start. So that was May 2009, and there are some others I faintly, faintly remember, but we're going to move to the fall of 2009 now. And uh, we're going to do this these teams by generation, and we're going to start with 4 because that's what I started with. So we'll go through all of Gen 4 and then backtrack through Advance and Black and White and those. Also, these are all teams that I built either myself or had a significant hand in building. It's not like if I suggested to someone, hey, change HP Ice to HP Grass, and suddenly it's my team. No, it's something I had significant hand in building or built on my own. I'm a big stickler for giving credit, so... Yeah, so... Uh, fall of 2009... Tearful, look, what the hell is that? That must be new. What does that even do? Uh, Spike, Spore, I don't even remember the last, probably Taunt, or I think Whirlwind, actually. Because I saw someone else on Wi-Fi use it, and I was like, hey, that's pretty smart. So we're just going to Whirlwind, Smeargle. And who knows, it's EVs. But yeah, Smeargle was a pretty popular lead in Gen 4. For, during the current Gen, there's some old RMTs with it, like Kevin Garrett's and August's. You can look up in the RMT archive because Smeargle was great against these bulky leads like Swampert and Hippo and Metagross because Metagross didn't run Lum at the time. So it would get a, a spore, it would sleep something and then get a Brox and Spikes, which is pretty much just the dream. And uh, obviously it stopped being good, but I really loved the idea because I loved me some hazards. So then after that, I had Miss Magius because. 
On Wi-Fi, you needed an action replay code to use the Rotom forms, so I could not do that. And plus, I just loved Miss Magius. It's still one of my favorite Pokemon. And I was really excited because May of 2009 was when Platinum was the metagame, but fall of 2009 was when Heart Gold and Soul Silver were released in Japan. So while it wasn't as impactful on the metagame as Platinum was, because Platinum gave us Bullet Punch Scizor and Outrage Salamence and the Rotom forms and whatnot, Heart Gold and Soul Silver still gave us a couple other things, most notably Extreme Speed Dragonite and uh, Recover Quagsire. But also, um, oh, and some like other stuff like uh, Shadow Sneak Giratina O oh, and Brave Bird Ho O. Oh. I'd love Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Anyway, point being that one of those moves that people were excited about was that Miss Magius previously was just Sub Call Mine, but now it had Nasty Plot. So I don't remember what the set was. Was it uh, Sub? I'm just gonna assume this and HP Fighting or Thunderbolt or something. Probably something like this. And uh, yeah. So, Miss Magius was my spin blocker, plus I just love it. Always female. Uh, that reminds me, I remember, not with this team, but a couple months, and at this time, but a couple months later, then I was playing someone with uh, Mixape, and I knew I would outspeed it with my max speed Miss Magius, because standard Mixape ran 330 speed, because that's all you need in OU, because no one runs Miss Magius and the other 339 Pokemon, Scyther. So, that's uh, UU stuff. Anyway, so Miss Magius, then Scizor. So, Choice Band Scizor, amazing because it abused spikes, because with U turn, then your opponent gets dug into by spikes, and then you hit him with a strong banded U turn, then you force him out again and more switches, yada yada. That's the idea. Bullet Punch, clean stuff up easily. And, yeah, Scizor was the king in Gen 4 OU. During the Dragon's metagame, anyway. So, then, we start getting into weird territory. And, uh, so, during that time where I was learning competitive and watching Wi-Fi battles, uh, one of the people I watched was Maryland, and he always put disclaimers about how he was not an actual competitive player, and you should go to Smogan if you want to see actual good players, which is what I did eventually. But... I didn't believe him, and then I saw Dysfunction beat him, and what he did was curse Baton Pass, use this Umbreon set, and pass it to an Azumarill, and I thought it was just genius, because that's how I was impressed back then, uh, in creative combos that people would come up with. I was a big fan of those ever since I learned about all the cool double battle combos you could pull off in Pokemon Coliseum, you know, Sunny Day, Solar Beam, stuff like that. So. Uh, this one was just top of the line, because look, you curse, and then you're always slower, so your payback is going to be doing double damage, not to mention you boosted its power, and you can't even be phased, roared or whirlwinded, because taunt is faster no matter how fast, or how slow you are, because whirlwind is negative priority, so I just thought it was genius. And then you pass the curse to a Pokemon spamming priority? Bravo. Now, Dysfunction did this in Diamond and Pearl, where Scizor didn't have Bullet Punch, so he passed to an Azumarill, which spanned Aqua Jet. And I think he also passed to a Sash Lucario, which was pretty great, too. Uh, but uh, my obvious choice was Choice Band Scizor, which was dominating the metagame. So at this point, like, ever since I started playing, then I had this... I had a pretty good grasp on what was OU and, like, what good Pokemon were, but my... I was restricted somewhat in the Pokemon I could use. Like, at first I was using Illuminate Starmie just because it was the only Starmie I had. And then I still took some time to get adjusted to the fact that, yeah, some Pokemon are OU and some Pokemon are not. Like, for example, the first draft of this team was had a Furret. Why? Because I had my first five and my buddy who loves Furret, Cat Fighter Force 9, he said, dude, use Furret. And I was like, okay, why not? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> And then I played Wild Chase in a tournament, uh, Wild Chase's 2K subscriber tournament, I believe, and it was round two, and I just got crushed. I mean, I was always going to struggle with that game, but I really felt the scope of his Infernape and whatever else versus my, you know, Furret and Miss Magius. So uh, that, that really left a mark on me, and that's why I got rid of the Furret. So speaking of weird sets. I uh, 
I was still getting used to the idea of... Um, I don't even remember what set I used on the Sapdos, because I remember it was Heatwave Roost Roar, and it was bold, because this was a very popular Scizor counter, because it just completely destroyed it. Walled it, and it just killed it easily. But I didn't run Thunderbolt. I don't even remember what. Like, Toxic? Hidden Power? Could I even action replay for Hidden Powers back then? But I just remember I didn't run an Electric move, just because I thought it was too obvious, you know. But Zapdos was great. And this was actually how I learned about Cradilly's Suction Cups, because I tried to roar it, and it would not be phased, so... Anyway, so after the Choice Band Furret, then I actually wanted to keep using this team because I love the Umbreon idea. And Smeargle, of course. So I replaced it with a Shiny Choice Scarf Breloom. So, I actually had a period of using a lot of Scarf Loom where I would Spore on the first turn and then switch to SD Empoleon or Calm Mind Crest and just start setting up. And I don't remember the rest of the team at all, unfortunately. I really wish I had uh, kept some stuff around. Anyway, so yeah, that was this team, and I uh, miss miss those days a lot, but this was the fall of 2009, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out. And you know, I was uh, so excited for Heart Gold that I actually ordered it in Japanese. The first time I used this team, then... I actually was playing on a Japanese Heart Gold, and I, I had no problems following along. It was crazy. I don't think I could do that again today, but I was just so determined to pay supremely close attention, and yeah. Anyway, so moving on to the next. Uh, finally, the final team from the fall of 2009 that I remember almost entirely. So I was going to battle Stevo 188 and I just wanted to make a new team and at first I was trying to figure out what it was going to be and then I figured I would throw out Ambipom because Ambipom was very popular in the... I remember I had Ice Punch because in one battle I outsped an Aerodactyl lead and killed it after faking it out which should not happen because Aero is faster but uh, so he must have been adamant or something but yeah, I uh, used this because it was very popular. I think I used Taunt too to prevent rocks, but Ambipom was a super common lead on Wi-Fi, even in OU, even though it really belongs in UU. But uh, yeah, and it was a lot of fun to use. And I used it with uh, Focus Sash Frostlass because I would keep hazards off so I could use my Sash. Believe it or not, in like the scrubbier area of Wi-Fi, Tyranitar was not very common. I mean, you had your Infernapes and your Menses and your Swamperts and your Scizors, but Titar itself was like kind of out there. You know, even Latias was fairly common, I guess, but yeah, even then. So, Spikes, Taunt, who even knows what the last were, but you know, Max. I'm gonna assume Ice Beam something, Ice Beam Debond, but who knows. Anyway, so here was another milestone for me. There used to be this set on the decks, this uh, Heatran, which it was something like this. It was like specially defensive but modest with overheat. I think Mr. Flamethrower on Wi-Fi used to use it a lot and I tried it myself and I really really liked it. And I don't know where this set came from but it was a lot of fun to use and what I was proud of myself for doing was the first time I sent it out, I was like, all right, I'm going to roar. I don't have hazards, but I just want to see what he, the opponent is running. And I was really proud of myself for that. And then later on, I saw Steve-O-180 himself using Skarmory, and he was like, oh yeah, I always whirlwind first to scout what they have. And I was like, oh my god, this good player does what I do. So, uh, Steve-O-188 was a, a Gen 4 Wi-Fi player. Not a smoking hero or anything, but he was one of the better ones. He was, for YouTube Wi-Fi standards, I would say he's very good. And in the game I played him in, then he had a Choice Band Head Smash Aggron, which had also just uh, come with Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now, I don't remember anything... I don't remember the last Pokemon. I remember I had Gliscor and Scarf Flygon. You know, Scarf Gone is cool. And, okay, believe it or not, I used Fly in the last slot. 
because I, you know, I was still playing in-game. I had fun with Platinum and Heart Gold and stuff, and I would just use the, my Scarf Flygon to fly around in-game because, you know, I never use a fourth move anyway. And in one game, I had the guy swept. I think it was an Australian guy or an Irish guy or something, and uh, which is what made him so distinct, his accent. And then uh, I had him swept with Earthquake or Outrage, and I clicked fly by like an idiot I, by accident, and I lost. I was so angry. Anyway, uh, yeah, this was another fun one. I mean, this is a long time ago. This is 11 years this fall. Good lord. All right, so we're moving on to January 2010. And you will... I actually don't even have to recreate this team because we can just go look for Nito King. Yeah, January 1st, 2010. Uh, nicknames and everything, except Registeel was all caps. But yeah, I've used this team in my videos. It was a lot of fun. I, it, the idea was an entirely BL team. And, uh, or at least, um, entirely BL at highest. So, I had some great sets that you see here. I just wanted to sleep things. I always was telling myself it's more of a fun team, not a real one, but it, it was successful. I remember I used it in Yuki Jaden Survives' Maryland tournament, and this Cresselia was just disgusting because Scizor was everywhere, and it lured it in and killed it so easily. So I was really proud of myself for that. And plus, you know, offensive Cresselia, you know, no one can get mad at you for using an offensive crest. It's the defensive lame stuff that got reviled back then. You know, uh, the YouTube rule was no Scar and Bliss crests or no Scar and Bliss and stuff like that. So yeah, miss those days. I actually didn't use shiny Raikou. I just did on the ladder because this was before uh, the heart, the Aurasphere event. So I wasn't bluffing Aurasphere at all and I just used regular. But my blaze again was shiny, and uh, this game was really important to me because it was that this with this team that I made my first double switch. Now I don't remember all the specifics. I was trying to figure out how to break this guy's core of Celebi and Vaporeon, I think, or, or something. I don't remember the, how exactly. But I eventually realized that if I got my Nido King on one, then I could two it KO. I think the Celebi with Megahorn. I think. And I eventually figured out and got myself into that position, and I pulled it off, and I was so, so proud of myself. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I think Mixed Nido King is probably better, but I just loved, you know, I was like, higher attack stat, hell yeah. Even though it's not by much. And even though Nido King's special coverage is a lot more lethal. But, you know what, whatever. Sucker Punch is great. Megahorn is fun and cool, so. Uh, yeah. Alright, so now we're getting into real OU territory. So, lead Empoleon. Now, my Specs lead Empoleon was just, oh, it's my starter and it's Specs. What could possibly go wrong? But, now I wanted to use the lead Empoleon set that I saw on the site and no one was using it. I don't remember it at all. I look, I scoured the RMT forum. No one really spammed it. It was on set, but I used it on ladder. And while I was never a very good shoddy ladder, it was disgusting. It was just Azelf, Arrow, Azelf, 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 Heatran, Swampert, Metagross, all of them just got destroyed. And I loved it. And I remember the EV spread without even having to look it up. It was this exactly to outrun Metagross and survive Earthquake and BP. And this, uh, yeah, those were the days. So yeah, Empoleon lead was fantastic. And uh, this was like the first real competitive, fully OU team I made. And I, like I said, I tested it on Shoddy. I uh, even used it in a Reggie League tournament against Sarkaz Jack, I believe. And it was it was good. I lost, but it, the team was good. And uh, the Wi-Fi variant was different because I still didn't have my action replay code, so I couldn't use Rotom. So I used uh, actually I was looking for Rosa Raid there. So I used CB Scizor instead, just because, you know, when in doubt, Scizor. But yeah, so here was this awesome, awesome Roserade set uh, that no one else was using either. I think like in the higher echelons of play than like Locopoke and others like in his circle were using it. And I got it from the site, but this was not like a common OU set. And I was like, whoa, Roserade gets spikes, not just T-spikes. I love that. 
I was a big T-Spikes guy. I used to like mess around with this gravity toxic spikes team with Drapion that I was so proud of because he would poison everything, even Zapdos, and then Suicune would go berserk. I used a lot of Krokun. I wish I could remember that team. I'd include it otherwise. And I love Drapion too. But point being that I was a big toxic spikes guy, big hazards guy in general, but you know, Rosary using spikes, that was wonderful. And I didn't even have to use it as a lead. So these two I still love. And uh, you know why I would change the sets up a little then yeah, so then I don't remember what Rotom set I used. Probably Rest Talk. Uh, and here's another thing I used, which was Top OU. This was when Scarf Tar was first becoming incredibly popular because Trick Rotom, Trick Latias, Specs Latias in general were ruining teams because Blissey would just get destroyed, and Titar would step in and destroy them. And Super Power was the good set. It was another you know newly discovered move on Titar, and it was just awesome. And so more signs of the times. Now, even though I wasn't uh, exactly like in the loop, I, I kind of was because I had gone to Smogan to look at some RMTs and I like was, I don't think I had them in mind specifically, but these were the Pokemon that were popular. I mean, uh, these Pokemon were not exactly popular, but like these, the Gliscor, Taunt Toxic was the set then, Jolly all the time, always. And uh, the standard spread was, 216 speed to outrun Jolly Lucario and Roserade and Timid Roserade and then some people would go 36 you know creep a little and eventually people would just run max speed Gliscor just to taunt Toxic versus each other that was what every good player would do and finally Wish Calm Mind Jirachi some of them ran Flash Cannon I always liked Psychic more so especially because they don't have T-Spikes uh, to Poison Pert here and yeah you just run Bold and it was pretty frigging unkillable and it would run always a spread around this. So, yeah, this was the OU metagame in the early fall 2009 on Smogan. And then, you know, I got to the party a little late, but it was still going strong. I mean, the more popular spikers were Taunt, Skarmory, and uh, Fortress. But, you know, Roserade did its own thing. It was really great. Uh, this was to take Bullet Punch, the defense investment, and it still took Draco Meteor, and it was just a wonderful Pokemon. And Polion got the game off on such a good note. Oh, it was it was lovely. I I have great 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 attachment to this team. Uh, yeah, it was it was really hard to have a good matchup against Polion. Then you know the only thing that it really lost to was um, oh what, what am I talking about? It didn't even run Focus Sash. It ran Chobbleberry because that let it beat Fake Out Infernape. Because otherwise Infernape would Fake Out in close combat. It would die. But with Chopple, then you don't care and you live close combat and you Hydro Aqua Jet, and uh, you didn't really need Sash for anything else. Because lead Dina, it, a lead Dina, you'd still survive its superpower, and uh, Zapdos lead wasn't really a thing then. So Empoleon was just an incredible lead, and I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it to death. And uh, all these other Pokemon, Sign of the Times, and Nostalgia Overload. Am I already at almost a half hour? Good lord. Okay, so um, yeah, so moving on to the spring of 2010. That last team was from March, so now we're talking like April, May, June. So this was not like an exact team, but it was uh, a rough approximation. I would just have like these OU Pokemon like thrown together in my box and I would go battle with them. So th these were the guys I used the most. Uh, Spidef Skarm, which was the Skarm set. I mean, not, not so much Taunt. I liked Max Spideff Brave Bird, and it really took, or took, tanked everything. And uh, then, you know, Scarf Tar again, and Heatran, who ran a set which is non existent today, but back then was tremendous because it owned Swampert and Blissey without having to explode. Subtoxic. Now, you know, nowadays you can't really run this set, but it was. It destroyed Gyarados too. Phenomenal set. I miss it a lot. And then, of course, I ran the big bad Salamence with Draco Meteor, Fire Blast. This was a new mix mence, as it was referred to, because Classic was Brick Break Roost, but I, I was never a fan of that. I always loved uh, this set, and this was the standard spread, and it just mauled everything. Fast, strong, intimidate. And the finisher, Lucario, not with a choice band, with Life Orb. 
and back then the standard last was crunch. So yeah, I just used this in lots of Wi-Fi games, and it was fun. It They weren't really synergistic, like intentionally, but they were just generally good enough Pokemon to where I could just play good games. Now, sometimes I uh, mix some other Pokemon in here, like um, Infernape, who at the time, Choice Band was rising in popularity, but so was the physical Mix Ape, which was like... Which, uh, so, it took the special mix AB spread and pretty much reversed it. And you could run Stone Edge or Mach Punch, but, uh, it, so, the special mix ape had, uh, 252 special attack and 64 attack, and here it was just reversed. So, uh, yeah, this was the set that, you know, people like Wild Chase were running and then it caught on. So, Yeah. And I would throw this in, I would throw in the newly popular offensive Suicu, never with a life orb. Some people like that, like uh, M Dragon, I think, used it on his U-Turn team, the Art of U-Turn and the RMT Archive. But I was always a fan of this, and I was never a fan of max speed, I thought that was a waste. I always liked to give it a little bulk, you know, uh, Dragonite, especially because Bents was, or Mamoswine, actually. Because uh, I used this while Mence was still around, so you weren't really trying to outspeed Jolly Dragonite then. So Suicune, and sometimes I threw in Gliscor uh, as well. Scarf Rachi, so yeah, but these were just the general general guys. So now we're going to go back to the Empoleon Roserade combo, and to save time I'm going to stop filling out the movesets every time. But uh, eventually I did figure out the Rotom action replay code, got myself an action replay, said alright, I'm going to do it. And this was the first RMT I posted on Smogan. So I'm going to fill out some sets. Now, uh, the Infernape here is the one you just saw, the physical mix set. So this Jirachi was way ahead of its time in a way. It was this, and it was on the decks. I never saw anyone else use it. And I, all I remember was that it had 156 Impish. And the, you know, I assume this much speed for max speed T-Tar, DD, and mixed. And then, you know, something like this, who knows. Oh, wait, no, I remember. It was uh, 401, so it was like that. And my name for it was Nine Inch Nails, because I liked the song Wish, because Linkin Park did a cover of it. And uh, the primary Garrus spread, or set at that time, rising through Platinum with its stall teams, and their need for an answer to Infernape that wasn't Tentacruel was Rest Sleep Talk. So I threw it on here because that was a lot of what the, you know, as the YouTube community moved more toward the competitive metagame, like guys like Cool Trainer Alex and Roscoe and Mud Quaza even getting in on it, Dangerous 36M, then and a lot more that I can't remember right instantly. Uh, was a lot of it was like, hey, hazards are pretty good. So a lot and like even Sweepage and Double Nazer One and uh, Brofist, who was known by as Cloudstripe back then, and Mr. Flamethrow and all the other guys on Regi League and Poka Central. Then uh, there was a lot of Machamp leads thrown around, your support rocks, Heatran, the offensive one with Naive and Shukaberry, and Roserades and Rotoms, and you would just, uh, it was pretty easy. You would throw in your Machamp or D-Knight lead, or just lead off with the Heatran, and then your Roserade and your Rotom, Rest Talk Gera, or Offensive Suicune, then finish it off with uh, your Scarfer. If Rotom's not your Scarfer, then Flygon, then you, or Jirachi. You can also use Calm Mind Jirachi, then you can throw in your Suicune, or not Suicune, um, you can use Mixcon for surprise, or just then you can fill it out with stuff like Infernape and Heatran and Dragonite and Zapdos if you like, and uh, Lucario of course, and all sorts of stuff. And I miss those days a lot. So yeah, I remember I had one game where I was playing Dublinazer One on a Reggie League stream, and I had, and we were both spamming hazards because that was the meta game back then, and we uh, with Roserade. And uh, so I ended up winning the game because the Jirachi slow U-turned and passed a wish to Infernape, which gave it a second life and allowed it to, you know, survive and pose a threat. God, I really, really wish my old videos were still around. Anyway, so yeah, this was another one, and uh, this was the first RMT I posted on Smogan. So, uh, yeah, here's another super nostalgic team. Uh, Machamp lead, I'm not gonna do that because we all know about it. And Blissey, and this was for King Daddy D-Max Tournament. 
which was the first tournament I ever won. And it was against, this was like round four or five against MML Frosty Pixie, who was a prominent figure in the scene, and there was like a whole bunch of drama about it. Uh, that, it was really dumb, but basically using Scarm Bliss on Wi-Fi was not looked upon kindly. I just wanted to use, you know, stall, and I had a Scarf Rotom Wash, so I was like, oh, okay, I'm good against Infernape, even though then I had a Subseed Breloom, the old deck spread, which was, oh, come on. this and it lost to Gliscor. This set was not good against Gliscor because it would taunt, but you know, other than that it was just so annoying. Uh yeah, and my last was CB Scissor because I didn't know what else to put on. And someone else was like, dude, get destroyed by Infernape Harden. I was like, I have Scarf Rotom. He was like, come on. And then after that I was like, yeah, okay, I probably should have put a Gyarados on this. And obviously this was like a super, super flawed team, but uh, you know, still learning the ropes. Although so I understood the competitive metagame, it was just you know, not every team was equal, but uh, I, I ten ended up doing just all right because passive damage is strong, and I was able to play pretty well. So yeah, I used this against Frosty Pixie, and people got, well, you know, like two people got mad, and everyone else was like, "Dude, no, we're past that." It was. It's kind of been a weird circle to watch people go from on Wi-Fi. Dude, you can't use stall. What is that? And the, you know, that's part of the reason I came to Smogan in the first place to get into a more competitive scene. And then even then on Wi-Fi, then people were like, "Oh, come on, you can't complain about Scarm Bliss. Just get good. It's not even that hard to beat." And you know, then we went in circles again. Like I remember in X, Y, and Oris, and people would just hate stall and ban it and stuff like that. Like it's Sun and Moon too. And uh, yeah, it was irritating. So. Yeah, people just don't like stall. Anyway, so this was another one, and you know, Machamp. I remember I had another team with Machamp, Bliss, and Skarm that I don't quite remember, but I remember playing Vapor Drops, I think, and he will o -wisp my Rota my Machamp with Rotom, and I pay back the hell out of it, and I was like, throughout the entire game, I was saying to myself, man, it is so much easier to play when I have actual good Pokemon. And, you know, oh, not just good Pokemon, you know, like not Illuminate Starmie, Natural Cure, but like OU Pokemon, so... Yeah, this was, uh, I mean, back then I used to, I had a stupid hail stall team too. And, like, I just was one, oh, yeah, 14 years old, and I was like, uh, well, a lot of 14 year olds go, well, I want my big choice band, Swords Dance 9000 attack. And I was like, yeah, stall. I want my opponents to suffer as I toxic and leech seed and spikes and whirlwind and, and also my scarf rotom because I like revenge killing. But, you know, that was, it was a pretty good style, and it worked. And uh, UU and Ubers too. God, I wish so bad. We're going to go over DBP Ubers too later because I uh, love that tier. But I wish so badly I could remember my Whirlwind Rest, uh, my Whirlwind Roar Rest Talk Lugia team because that was so much fun. Anyway, so we're going to take a break from Gen 4 uh, time wise because we're skipping to the summer of, or no, late 2011. So. Uh, I was, I had some other teams, like some Roserade, Blissey, Skarmory stuff, but it wasn't as fond to the heart, whereas this team uh, was serious. So at this point I was playing like seriously on Smogan, yada yada. So I took some, th this was meant to be a very anti-meta game team that was supposed to be annoying to the common stall teams, but also, but mostly common offense, because offense was incredibly irritating. And I decided, you know what's good? Mixed Tar. I had used it on a couple other teams, and Standard Fortress Stall, which was the standard at the time, just could not handle it at all. And I used Starmie too, because Stealth Rock Heatran was everywhere, and you would just get super, super free spins all game long. The metagame eventually came to, you know, revolve around Starmie in a way, but not back then. And it was still a huge upper hand in a lot of games. And it was nice having the freedom to spin, because previously I used a lot of Fory, and, you know, now it was like, well, now I don't have to run away from Heatran, now I switch into Heatran and spin. So, I should probably widen the screen a little bit. 
So yeah, this is fall 2011, and here's where the anti-metagame stuff comes in. It was a bunch of firewater grass offense, and this Zapdos set was death. And uh, the idea of this team was pretty much to spam similar Pokemon to this. That was the synergy. With a good enough defensive core, and it was pretty good. Uh, I'm not even trying to remember my EV spread. Although I will say I almost definitely went to 319 just to sub up on Taunt Gliscor. Especially because I remember an old Wi-Fi game where I saw my leftovers go before a Subtox Zapdos with my own Gliscor, and I was able to do Taunt it and win the game that way. So I always EV'd for that. But the standard spread was slower than Gliscor. I remember that very, very convincingly. Uh, although then some good players just started running max speed just because, but yeah. So then we had Scarf Scizor because Subsplit Gengar, while you don't see too much of him today, at the time he was incredibly dominating. He would, uh, he crushed offense and stall alike. And Scarf Scizor, I always ran in this spread, would just destroy him, guaranteed. And it was huge. And it was especially big because my last two Pokemon hated Gengar. And I wanted, and back then Sandvale was legal, and I wanted to use Sub Roost, not Taunt Toxic, and I realized I was giving up on Skarm, but I figured getting up rocks, having Spin, and having Breland would be enough for stall. And plus, Sub, -tox sub Toxic Roost Gliscor was incredibly annoying to offense as well. So, and the last was uh, Leech Seed Breloom, so both of these obviously cannot touch Gengar at all, but incredibly annoying, and with Zapdos, this team was. Lots of fun. I had, I enjoyed finding a nice balance between, you know, I need my hazards and I need to predict right with my Rotom to maintain my hazards and, you know, more screaming offense stuff. So, uh, yeah, I liked this team a lot. It was a nice pace, nice and balanced, and it was really good. And I used this in uh, an SPL tryout against Atticus, and... I actually won, and then he didn't draft me, and I was like, what a dick. But yeah, so sub was irritating, and this was very anti-metagame at the time, and it did well. So it covered things nicely. T-Tar would get rocks super easily, and it would maintain them against stall without a problem, without a hitch. Starmie would keep rocks off against Heatran. Scizor would maul Gengar and just be great against other Starmie, and then these guys would just go nuts. So yeah. Now we are moving to spring of 2012, where I made one of my all-time favorite teams, and it is called Bleed, because I was listening to Meshuga, and I wanted to have an edgy, painful-sounding name, but this was one of my favorite teams of all time. And I believe that Bluin actually used a team like this, with a Life Orb arrow, but I think this is entirely my own. So I'm a big stickler on credit, of course, and I wouldn't want to steal anything from him, but I remember he had something like this. But yeah, so uh, more. this was my first time using Spadef Hippo, and I fell in love with it. This was the spring of Hippo in both black and white, which I played a major part in, but more on that later. And, uh, and in, in DPP. Now, Kevin Garrett's team had made Spadef Hippo like the standard, but this is my first time using it, and then I realized, oh my god, this is, this is amazing. It's incredible. So, uh, this was just, you know, Spikes, Roserade, and Scarf Rotom, and Starmie. And, uh, this was actually, no, no, not Bold Starmie yet. We'll get to that. So, I, uh, yeah, and then the last was, it was first a Wish Calm Mind Jirachi, and then it turned into a Wish Protect Jirachi, and then it turned into a Skarmory, so, and that was the version that most people knew. Uh, let's see if I can look it up. Yeah, so... And here was the thing that really made this team what it was. So it was an arrow finisher. Now, I had faced some nasty Life Orb arrow teams before. Like in this early summer of 2011, I was on ladder. I was facing this guy with a Snorlax semi-stall team. And I was just trying to get the spin off with Starmie. And I hydro pumped his Scarf Rotom. And I was like, yes. 
Uh, whatever he sends in next is going to be slower, and I'll get the spinoff, because his Rotom is a Scarfer. And he sends in an arrow, and I was like, oh my god, that is genius. The secondary uh, way to... It's the secondary method of outspeeding Starmie to deny the hazards. It's perfect. And Life Orb Arrow, which ran a set of... This was the set that I think was on Blue Wind's team. Roost... Stone Edge and Earthquake. This set not very good today, but it was at the time inc devastating to stall teams. Absolutely horrifying. And it was, matter of fact, the reason why this hippo ran Ice Fang very often, because I was very afraid of other arrow. But th while this was a very, this was a great anti metagame arrow set, this was not the set I ran. This was the set I ran. And it was devastating. It stalled teams out so easily. I ran a bulky spread, even though it never really did much for me. Some attack probably would have been nicer, but I wanted spread F just to handle everything. And uh, this was the Scarf Tar benchmark. I could have gone higher for Gyarados at plus one, but uh, hindsight and all. And, or just attack investment, but this was bulky, you know, ate up Draco Meteors. It walled the hell out of Specs, Heatran, stuff like that. So it was... Uh, it mixed Flygon. Oh my god. Talk about getting completely walled because you would just sub and it would run out of Dracos as you would pressure stall because yeah arrow has pressure uh, which the other set used too actually and this just made full use of it another great use sub pressure stalling uh, trick room bronzong out of gyro ball so the reason I looked this up was because this was the first smogan tour I ever won and I used this team to win it and I was incredibly incredibly proud of it and myself, but I just love the hell out of this team, and the arrow was just devastating as, uh, unfortunately Giga Punch had something I really didn't like in Breloom, one of Arrow's few enemies, that's why I had to wear it down with that, but, yeah, see, just comes in taunts, and, yeah, so this was not the best showcase of Arrow's abilities, but, I mean, I'll leave the link in the description. But uh, yeah, getting up spikes, and l l let me just uh, do that, because Heatran was everywhere, so it comes in, and zilch. Probably should have fixed my EV so it would never break the sub, but uh, yeah, not that it mattered with pressure and whatnot. So taunting to prevent his Jirachi from doing anything dumb, and yeah, so Arrow, and I think Rotom was the cleanup. Yes, it was. So... Uh, there was that, and I just love this arrow set, and I spammed it and everything. And, uh, yeah, April 1st, 2012, I'll never forget that date. Arrow always seemed to find a way. And, uh, yeah, Spadef Hippo was also great because owning sp uh, Subsplit Gar, like I said, was a big threat. And Mixed Knight, another huge threat. Those guys together would just ravage Stall. So I use this team all the time. It did incredibly well on Smoke and Tour, uh, but... Like, I remember in the fall of 2012, I used it against Crystal in the later rounds, and it was still as nasty as ever. And uh, one game that came out in particular that showed both Arrow and Hippo's prowess was I was facing McMegan for the All Gens tournament. He was my rival that year. And he was, uh, he had his very offensive team, and I was still, you know, barely holding on. And. He had a Trick Room Bronzong, a Spex Kingdra, and a Leaf Storm Celebi. So, uh, what happened was that I I don't remember exactly the log, but here's roughly what happens. My he my arrow stalled out his Bronzong's four Gyro Balls thanks to pressure, which made him have to explode. And then Spadef Hippo stalled out a Leaf Storming Celebi because it lived a max special attack one too. It lived the first one, slacked off, and then each subsequent one got weaker, and eventually it died. And then McMegan sent in Specs Kingdra and used Surf, and Hippo lived that too and won. And it was just wonderful. I love this team so much. It was a part of me. So, yeah, bleed. I, and, oh, I used this team in, uh, the Smogan Tour 16, not 16, 14 
round one against Blue, where it won, and then the semifinals deciding game against Vince 26-12, which it also won. So this team meant a lot to me, and it had a lot of success ever since that first tour to... And then, you know, after that, then some people like Undisputed used an SPL, and he's like, dude, this team is so good. And uh, I, unfortunately, Arrow is not so good anymore, and I really want it to be. But this, for its time, it was just beautiful. Yeah. Okay, moving on. So, on that day, I won that first Smogan Tour, which was the best. I was 15, and Roscoe and Joey and all those guys were watching and cheering me on, and you know, against the big Smoganers I played. Uh, I remember my opponents too. Apologies, Blue Exorcist, Django, IFM, Wid, Conflict, Giga Punch. I might have messed up the order, but those were everyone I played. Okay, so uh, in the early rounds, like against Apologies, then I used this team with the Machamp lead. I think it was inspired by something Furai used to run, uh, not Leftovers, Toxicorp, used to run on Wi-Fi, and it was an offensive Breloom, no, uh, sub-punch, but, you know, with Seed Bomb, and, you know, it was just the Machamp Breloom combo with Heatran to put pressure on Stall, and with Gliscor to act as the buffer against, not, not just Stall, but also Scarf Ligon on offense, because Gliscor dominated Scarf Ligon, and uh, Starmie and Scarftar, and it was simple. It, it wasn't the best team, it had its flaws. You know, Offensive of Suicune was a terror. But for that first day, it was great. And then I tweaked with it, it was a Scarftar. And I tweaked it with it, playing some more. And then I eventually changed the Machamp to a Gallade. And, which is like Machamp, but it also owns Machamp. And uh, it's great, it's fast. It, uh, it outspeeds Heatran, and you don't have to run Sash to avoid dying to a Specs Overheat. That's another huge benefit of it. And it's got Shadow Sneak, so it's got nice priority for Rotom. Not that you really need it with Scarf Tar, but... Uh, yeah, and then the last move, Ice Punch. And I changed Breloom to Shaman to better deal with Suicune. And just generally nice to help with uh, Gengar, who is a pain. And, uh, yeah, just a good Pokemon. Nowadays, with hindsight, I definitely should have put an Obama Snow here. Just because it would have annoyed Blissey even more. Because Breloom was supposed to annoy Blissey, but Shaman did that too with Leash Protect. And maybe Natural Cure was better so it didn't get ruined by Toxic. So maybe Obama Snow wouldn't have been perfect, but it would have been cool to mess around with. And plus, Gallade and Obama uh, Snow on the same team? How cool is that? Although Gallade and Shaman is already cool enough. Shaman was a lot more popular back then during the Fire, Water, Grass peak. So, uh, yeah, uh, Shaman also helped, because I was using Pasho Tran, which was, uh, before the standard was Shuka, and it was absolutely everywhere, but Pasho started gaining traction, you know, no earth power, and uh, HP Grass to mess with Waters, just live more of their dangerous assaults, especially Starmie and Suicune, and... Uh, you know, even though I had that, then it wasn't enough, so I had to be better against Suicune, because with the Breloom version, I had to like, go to Scarf Tar. I used to counter everything with Scarf Tar, and Offensive Suicune was among them. <laughs> Not very good, but I would, like, go to T-Tar, Stone Edge on the Hydro, live, switch out, Revenge Kill with Gliscor or something. Uh, or just double Stone Edge, who knows? It was, it was not ideal. So yeah, the, the, uh, at the time, the team Giga Punch used against me was the Taylor team, or the Rat Cheesy team with CB Azelf lead. And it was, uh, so CB Zen had about to destroy Machamp, and some good players started using Sash on Machamp, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to switch to Tyranitar in the first turn, because it was so popular, and it was just a free KO. Oh, and also what was nice with that Gallade with Lumberry could then switch into the Breloom that they would follow up with every time, and maintain some momentum, and uh, put offensive pressure on them. So yeah, it was just a good, fun team. Lots of good memories. It was solid. I mean, it had some problems with Life Orb Arrow and DD Tar, but uh, I think I went back to Shuka Tran after adding Shaman just to have some more security against them. Even though it wasn't that solid, and you know, Shaman if you keep it healthy, it's good enough. But yeah. So. Yeah, there, that was that.
Uh, oh, I have a very important competitive memory with this team. I was playing Loneliness in the Algen tournament, and I was down in the series, and it was time for DVP. So I was behind in the battle, and uh, he was up 2-1, I think. So uh, I, if I lost, then the series was over, because this was all gens when all the gens just include went through black and white. So I had... Um, I had my Scarf Tar super powering, and it, he switched. He predicted it and switched Rotom into it. Now I didn't want to let Lucario in for free as I went to Heatran because I expected he was running this uh, team of Jabas, I think, with Agility Lucario, which would just Ice Punch and ruin Gliscor and probably sweep me. And I super powered again. And if he Thunderbolted, then Gliscor was going to come in without risking Trick. And instead, he switched back to Lucario, and I was so proud of that because double switching was not a big deal back then. And predicting double switching like is normal nowadays and has been for a couple years was just non-existent. I was so, so, so proud of that. And so it was not the mainstream play it is now. And it was also similar to a play I had read about Earthworm making some years ago that had, had a huge effect on me and how I thought about the game. And uh, he was playing for Official Smoking Tournament 6 against Sapientia. And he deduced that there was a significant likelihood of a Lucario coming in. And he had this T-Tar out on a Latias, and if it set up on a Scarf Tar, he lost, so he Brick Breaked, because he was running Brick Break, I don't know why, and he caught the unrevealed Lucario coming in, and being, and, you know, this is different, but I was, I was really proud of it. So, uh, big, important memory. So yeah, uh, and incidentally, that and the thought behind it are why DPP is not blind guessing, unless you want to play it that way. So... Uh, yeah. Now for another team I am incredibly attached to that I call Drifter after an In Flames song that I used to really like. Can't say I've listened to In Flames at all in recent years, but yeah. So Scarf Tar, Spadef Tran, who I had loved on a million teams, but never really put it on anything I a team I had really loved before. But Spadef Tran in both... It was crazy how so many Pokemon in... Well, I guess just Spadef Tran and Spadef Hippo were so great in DPP and Black and White at the same time. And, uh, yeah, I was able to... And Fortress was great in both of those as well. So was, I was able to uh, transfer styles fairly easily. And even, like, bulky Starmie and stuff. Anyway, so this team was where everything felt like it came together. And I was talking to Ace Matador during SPL, which I had been picked up for and finally had my first real team tournament experience, and I was just like, wow, this is so cool. And uh, he told me about, you know, sometimes you have teams where they everything just flows together perfectly like it was designed to, and I was like, I know exactly what you're talking about because that's what I have with this team. And I think I had like a sub-split Rotom here for some reason, should, not Rest Talk, which I probably should have because Breloom is a pain, but, you know, that's just what I remember. So... Uh, a couple of things here. This was a team I spammed a lot on the PO ladder and I got really high up with. And it was where I started using Bold Starmie. Now this was not an entirely new idea uh, to run a slower, bulkier Starmie, but this was where it started like becoming popular. And I realized I only need to outspeed Heatran and the rest can go into bulk so I'm not playing guessing games against Scarf Tar. So, and it was just... A great, great Pokemon. And, you know, I ran, I think, just to the bonus point, so I had some Spadef. I think I had uh, something like this. But, you know, realistically, the spread should have been something like this. Anyway, or, uh, yeah. But, yeah, this set became really popular among some good players like Lizard Man and became the standard. And a guy named Fakes, who laddered a lot around at that time, he took a huge liking to this team, and he also helped popularize Bold Starmie by spamming it. And we used to spam this team against each other a lot. And it came down to, like, who had more speed EVs on their Heatran to beat the other to the roar. You know, like, are you gonna go, like, this? Or are you gonna go, like, this? And, you know, more... I generally did this, but yeah. And, um, yeah, and, like, even more synergy was that I got to keep momentum with U-Turn Gliscor because I didn't need it to... Uh, I, don't, I didn't really feel I needed Toxic or, obviously, Stealth Rock, so I got to U-Turn, and that was so nice, because, look, Heatran is great, but it doesn't like when Starmie comes in on it to threaten sp uh, Spin, and you obviously don't like switching Scarf Tar into a Hydro Pump, because then you have the Crunch versus Pursuit mind game, 
So what what happened was that Gliscor would bait Starmie in, you know, with Earthquake, Taunt, Toxic, whatever, and it would U-turn on it, and bingo, T-Tar gets in for free, and with free damage on top of that. And then Heatran sets, and Skarm too, same deal, sets up for free, and Starmie's already gone. And I love that, and that's why I've liked using U-turn Gliscor on a couple other similar teams that are defensive in nature, but they use this offensive tool to get momentum and really shut down the opponent's method of dealing with your team. So, that is what just made this team feel so, so, so perfect to me. And plus, it, another Pokemon that Gliscor would lure in and help dispose of with Scarf Tower was, gl uh, gl excuse me, Gengar. So, when Gengar comes and expecting to totally blank a toxic Gliscor, it gets you turned on, bingo, he tr uh, T-Tar disposes of it, and you know how people always say, okay, maybe you don't, because this is freaking eight years ago, Jesus Christ, but... Uh, you know, Starmie needs to outspeed, or rather, Gengar's not a good spin blocker against Starmie because uh, it just, even if it switches in on a spin, it can get KO'd on the next turn. Well, not so much with Bold Starmie, but that wasn't a problem because of the beautiful synergy of U-Turn into Scarftar. I just have so many thoughts I'm bursting to get out of, get out of myself. I feel like the chest burster in Alien. Anyway, uh... Yeah, it was, I was just locked in to what I was doing. It was a sign. It was perfect. Even the chip damage on something like Raindance Kingdra or Offensive Suicune was relevant. It would lock the opposing, opposing team down. And it would um, you know, really put them on a timer. Oh, another thing I would use. This was actually something Undisputed told me about in the fall of 2010 when he was my tutor. But it, And it was something I actually believe I made like somewhat of a standard... I'm I'm about 70% sure on that, so maybe 75. But Ice Beam on Scarf Tar, and uh, he was like, yeah, it's, it's a great move. It owns Gliscor, and Gliscor's always a pain. And another thing it owns is Mix Flygon, so that was a standard. Uh, that was, Mix Flygon was a killer for stall teams like this, and or semi-stall teams, because I know people like Crack used to run stuff like this with Celebi. And Ice Beam just... Goodbye. And more accurate against D-Knight. I, I mean, sometimes you miss Stone Edge, but usually I just loved having Ice Beam Scarf Tar. And I used it in DPP and Black and White. I know for a fact that I was the only person using Ice Beam Scarf Tar in Black and White. And yeah, it was just wonderful, wonderful Pokemon. And everything with this team felt right. I originally had a Lum Scarm version of it in like a month or two prior to when I was spamming this on ladder with the special defense variant because Lumscarm was a great anti-lead for Roserade and Machamp and I used it in Smoking Tour. I remember how great game I had against Most Wanted who was using this T-Spike sub uh, charge Rotom team. Not the old Java one, something more offensive with Swamp Hurt and uh, Scarf Tran I think, even though Scarf Tran really wasn't in vogue back then. But yeah, there was that and yeah, I, s I went over with Scarf Tar lead because of how popular Life Orb Starmie lead was. And uh, owning CB Azoff, which was everywhere, was obviously great, since I already mentioned that I like switching Scarf Tire into it with the uh, Machamp slash Gallade team. And so it was, it's not like an ideal lead, but you get the sand out quick and you beat some important leads. So uh, now I actually have the first log to accentuate this. Now it's a log, so not a replay, because this is eight years ago, and the... PO, the Pokemon Online replay, or er, log into replay converter was killed by Zeril, unfortunately. Maybe one day we'll have a, the converter back. But yeah, this was a game against Earthworm I had, in which, uh, for Victory Road, and I was really, the team was just doing great, and I was killing it. And I remember I got frozen, and it was, my Skarmory got frozen when it was going to single-handedly win. And it was still fine because I was still going to win. And then Scizor last turn crits me through Sandvale. I was steaming mad. <sighs> yeah, but it was a great game. And I it was like literal last turn nonsense. So knowing I should have beaten Earthworm, who was my hero, was a big deal. So uh, yeah, I love this team. And it was a part of me. And whenever I was in a team building slump in the years prior, then Heist would always say, dude, just go back to this. This is like your style. This works. Everything fires on all cylinder. So years of teams like this and me using Scarf Tar on everything is what led to stuff like August posting stuff about Scarf Tar on my Facebook wall for my birthday. So 
I had a lot of games against uh, Maine, for anyone who remembers him. He had this offensive U-turn team. I always had a pretty good matchup against it. Yeah, I, there are some teams you have emotional attachment to, but then there are some teams that go beyond that and really become a part of you, and this team was one of those. So, uh, yeah, I'm consulting my list, and I'm going to skip over some of the less important ones. We're going to move on to another important one. So, I ever since you might remember the story from earlier in this video about how I saw the guy who blanked my Zapdos's roar with his Credilly, and I was like, "Wow, Credilly's awesome! You can't phase it." So I, God, I wonder where my old computer is. I know I have all those logs saved. I will, I will discover it someday. Anyway. Uh, so, and Credilly is awesome for that, and I tried to make some teams with it. You know, in my early years, I paired it with Torment Tran because I loved Torment Tran. But it, the team itself wasn't so good. You know, I was still adjusting to the mix of OU Pokemon and then, you know, throwing in some junk just for the sake of it. But, you know, Credilly itself had some great moments. And then I saw, you know, like a year and a half later, Golden Sun destroying in Smog and Tor playoffs with a Cradilly. And he used it, I think he built the team with Heist, and he had Calm Mind Celebi, because you need the Breloom counter really bad. And I was like, well, I love Spadef Hippo, so let, let me give the Cradilly another try. So, you know, fairly standard uh, Skarm, Rotom... Uh, heat, I believe, yeah, scarf, and uh, the no, another. Yeah, excuse me. So before I get to why I use Crobat, I just want to get all the Pokemon there. So fun fact: these po both the uh, cool Pokemon on this team start with CR, and both of them are pink when shiny. So that's pretty awesome, I think. Anyway, Curse Rest, because you don't want to lose to Toxic. And I think Quake Slide was the preferred uh, coverage. I don't remember. And honestly, nowadays, I think the Spadef back then was excessive. And I should have probably used some attack so I don't get stalled out by Skarmory. I had a game against Most Wanted. And uh, I was... Cradilly was just destroying. I played Most Wanted a lot in Smoke and Tour. Like, at least three... No, four times. Maybe even five. In DPP every time, too. Anyway, so... Uh, and one game, I... It, it was really tight. And... It had, um... And it was down to his Skarm versus Cradilly. Well, I think I was still gonna be fine even if Cradilly didn't clean sweep. But, like, I had to stall out his Roost because I wasn't doing enough with my plus six attack. So that was the problem. So... Uh... Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking because it's been over an hour of straight yammering. Anyway, so yeah, Cradilly was awesome. And the reason I wanted to use Crobat was because it did a lot of things. Uh, it blanked Gliscor. It obviously destroyed the hell out of... Because uh, Gliscor back then used Tauntoxic. It obviously owned Breloom. And it was great against Stall, which was always a nice thing to have. But another reason, you might remember how I loved Arrow's ability to naturally outspeed Starmie. So even if my Scarf Rotom went down, that I would still be able to pressure it if it was within hazard's range, which was not a tall task, necessarily, if I played well. So, I had to... Uh, so, I would always have the option of Crobat, you know, just finishing it off like that. And I really like that. Plus, momentum with U-Turn, as the Gliss score on the previous team, Drifter, has showed. Then, uh, it was great. So, yeah. So, uh, now I have another log... This one is for the later rounds of a Smogan Tour against German player Deflo. And it was... I think I got crit a couple times. and But it was... Great, and I think... Cradilly, yeah, Cradilly switching into Shaman, taking nothing, as you see there. Those were the days. Anyway, and it all worked out in the end. Named after uh, Tool's 10,000 Days. Alright, let's see. Okay, this team is super, super, super fun. 
You know what? Maybe I should just stick, uh, make this video DPP only, because otherwise it's going to be insanely long. Okay, maybe I'll do that. We'll see. So, um, yeah, so here's, this was kind of gimmicky. This was still, this is still the fall of 2009, or, uh, sorry, 2012, and... This, I wanted to mess around with Moltres. Moltres is actually not bad in OU. It's Subroost, Life Orb Attacker is a pretty good lead because it owns my champ in Metagross easily. And uh, just attack, attack, attack. But the thing I wanted to mess with was Doug, which back then was still mostly a gimmick. But, uh, yeah, Doug. And here's where it gets dumb. So the idea was just Moltres is like Scarf Train, except it's got U-Turn, so you can easily switch out of opposing Heatran and T-Tar and just dug them. So I ran Skarm because Rock, Spikes, Defensive Backbone, and I ran Starmie with, just because you obviously need the spin. Here's where it gets silly. So I wanted spin blocking, and I also wanted Pursuiting, so I could get the spin off to support Moltres. And that is where Spiritomb came in handy. Spiritomb is known f as being a perfect Machamp counter, one of the very few, even better than Slowbro. Well, maybe not even better, because it doesn't have instant recovery, so I take that back. But it is a great Machamp counter, and it also owns the hell out of Gengar. And you have Pursuit and Shadow Sneak, and I don't even remember the last moves I used. I assume I used Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split. But it was great, and... Uh, I used Spirit Tomb on a couple teams back then, you know, just messing around, but, you know, owning Gengar was nice. And I'm not sure about this, but I'm pretty sure the last was Raikou. You know, Subcall Mine was the set back then. And, uh, yeah, this was before I picked up on the wisdom of always making your Raikou shiny. But, yeah, I think it was Raikou. I'm not 100% sure. All I know is that it was not a rock resist, because I played Most Wanted in another tour... Uh, this, it really must have been like five times, and he had this Ojama team with Life Orb Arrow, and I was like, wow, this murders me, <laughs> and I don't even remember how I switched around it, but I had to like switch Moltres into it on an Earthquake or a Taunt or something, and U-turn like I was actually chasing it out, and it worked, and then later on, I locked into Earthquake with Doug and killed something, and he tried to roost, and it KO'd, and I, oh, it was scary. Uh, but, yeah, what was nice about that game was that it was the one tournament game I ever used. It was, like, round five of a smoking tour, too. But it was, I think I made the finals of that one, and I used Bleed in the round after against Crystal. Such nostalgia. Anyway, so, Moltres, in that game, I was very proud because Moltres killed four Pokemon, and Dugtrio killed the other two. It was beautiful. Yeah, Moltres killed, uh, I... God, I don't remember. Shaman and Dark Show killed, like, Starmie and the Arrow, and Moltres just... Met. There was also a Metagross, I remember, or an Agility slash Rock Polish one. So yeah, this was not a very good team, but it was a lot of fun, and the one time I used it, then it worked out beautifully. So, okay, here's another big team. So, uh, before we look at this team, we have to examine some history, and look at, just very briefly... Egbert's Dark Horse team. Which, this, as far as I'm concerned, is the origin of bulky SD Scizor and DPP. This team was so good, and it kind of flew under the radar, but I used it a lot in uh, various tournament games, and it was excellent. And uh, the Scizor destroyed. So, uh, again, all links will be in the description. And look, there's even a 15-year-old me offering advice on uh, dealing with mixed Dragonite. So, yeah. But yeah, this was a great team, and I really loved using it. And around this time, Ace Matador was using... Oh, I even used an edit... This was uh, 2011, and I used it on and off for basically a year, and it always did great. And uh, around... Actually, over a year later, I used an edited version of it against uh, Earthworm in our rematch. I used the CB Dragonite version as suggested by Bada Bing. Oh wait, no, sorry. By Fryer. Great, 
great idea. So, and yeah, this time I got my revenge on Earthworm. He was using Clefable in this game. This is the first time I ran into a serious Clefable in DPP, and I used it in the Clefable video. But, yeah, um, and Scizor finished the game off, and it was great. And around this time, Ace Matador was using a Scizor team and killing Smog and Tor. So I decided, hey, I want my own. So I remembered how Heist had taught me about Choice Spec Zapdos because it owned Machamp and it also lured in Heatran and uh, totally smashed it so you could go crazy with like a Calm Mind Celebi or something. So I always used uh, these IVs. And I had that idea and I was like, well that's perfect with a Swords Dance Scizor. So, I would obviously throw that on, and eventually I stopped using Spec Zapdos, because turns out every Zapdos set was good here, and uh, the EVs were always like, probably I never used as much Spidef as I should have, but it was always roughly this-ish, and... Who knows how much it actually went to, but point is, it always looks something like this, and it was great. It turned the tables on. Wish Con other Pokemon that relied on Scizor just kind of holding Choice Band and getting worn down and not hitting that much harder, then it, it wasn't going to hit any harder than it already did, but, you know, Wish Call Mine Jirachi, Gyarados, Vaporeon, Subaru, Zapdos, all of them just got freaking crushed. It was pretty much, and like Offens of Suicune too, it even lived HP fires from Super Rachi and Shaman with ease. So pretty much the only thing most teams could do against it was go to Heatran, and that would get worn down and die if it hadn't already switched into a Z Spec Zapdos Thunderbolt and get mauled. So I wanted Starmie because, you know, Starmie was good, good on offense, make sure you don't have to deal with hazards that badly. And uh, then Heatran because... I wasn't running Scarf yet. I think I was originally running Scarf... Was I running Scarf Tar? I know I used this in uh, my second SPL with a Scarf Tar. And... What I think I did eventually... I, I don't remember. I remember it was, it was uh, very obviously Stealth Rock Pasho Heatran at the beginning, and it was great. But at... Uh, eventually... I don't remember, what was my Scarfer? And I used Breloom because pressure on stall, and god, this team was just wonderful in every iteration. But eventually what I did was, I know I started with the Scarf Tar, and then eventually I switched over to Mixed, because Mixed would be able to still pursue Rotom, while also toasting Skarmory. So, and uh, Mixed Tar, I would already talked about how nasty that set is, and of course it would be able to destroy... Um, Fortress as well, and then I would just use, um, I actually used Scarf Breloom for a little while, just for fun, honestly, but it was really good. And there are so many variations of this team, you know, with Rocks on uh, T-Tar and Scarf Heatran, but this was the original, and uh, with Scarf Loom, that was a lot of fun. That was the spring of 2013. This team persisted for a while, and it was, and I give this team credit because... These five, these first five, now this is in the last slot, these became defining DPP offense for so many years. And, you know, a lot of people think Flygon or Jirachi was the standard in the sixth slot. I don't think so. I think all these were way more crucial than them. And I pretty much tested every single Pokemon you could possibly want in this last slot. And they were all great. I mean, offensive Pokemon for the most part. Empoleon, Flygon of all sorts and si for shapes and sizes. Later on, we'll get to Infernape and Dragonite variants. Jirachi, of course. Kingdra, Skarmory, Mamoswine, Matagross, whatever. And uh, you could go... I even ran a Clefable slash Blissey version. So basically, these first five were insanely flexible, insanely good. Scarftran uh, was the more flexible variant, of course, because the last can be a Stealth Rocker. Although the Scarf Metagross version was particularly delightful. And Bronzong was great there too. Actually, Sweepage's team was like this. It had a Spec Zapdos and a, Zap and a Bronzong last. And he started using it again and actually made me aware of it after I had started using my Scizor. But this kind of team and me spamming this was what made this structure so popular and so prominent. Uh, so while Sweep's team was incredible, the Spec Zapdos Bronzong variant, uh, he also liked Bold Starmie on it actually. 
while it was really good, it did not have as much of a wide meta effect. And I do not say that disparagingly. I'm just a major stickler for credit going to the right places. And then, which is why I give a sweep so much credit for his uh, Trick Room Bronzong team. I remember he and PTTP, or Powered at the Pika, or Bala Brown 24 uh, used to debate about Trick Room Bronzong, or offensive Trick Room Bronzong, and who made it the threat it was. But I think both of them had a clear, important impact. So... Uh, we'll move on to Hoenn, I suppose. Actually, no, we'll do Jota because Heart Gold is all silver. Anyway, so, yeah, this team was big. It did uh, did a lot for me. I even re relied on it three years later in, like, the, the deciding game three of DPP Cup Semis against Zora Dark. I was like, oh, man, I need to use Perfect Team. And I was like, nope, I'm using Old Reliable, as Heist referred to it. And Scizor did Scizor things. And uh, I wish I could find the... Goddamn replay, but it was it was wonderful and beautiful, and I just loved it so 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 much. Still do. So yeah, uh, Scissor is great. Scissor is also great because it owns offensive threats while being an offensive threat itself. Subsplit Gengar, Agilagross, Trick Room, Bronzong. Those are all huge threats to offensive teams, and they are just completely non-plussed. By uh, or Scissor is completely nonplussed by them, so uh, this team did well in Tor and everything else I wanted it to use it in. It flowed really nicely. I think that's an important, underrated aspect of a good team. Whether it flows well, it per it performs well in game, but um, it, what really made me think, wow, this team is the real deal, was when I was reading Borat's GSC guide and he was detailing his Vaporeon team's incredible options for flexibility as well as the way it could shift in its play depending on the matchup. And I was like, wow, it's like I'm reading about this team. It's it's the exact same idea. And I was really proud that I was, you know, I was thinking the right things. I understood it. I, I wasn't just reading the words and, you know, barely glazing over their meaning, but really, you know, saying, wow, this is it. This is what I've been doing. So, uh, yes, this is War of Rocks. All right. Now time for a team that's a little offbeat. Okay, it's not weird, but it's one of my favorites, and I think it's got a lot of personality to it, which I think is really important. So I wanted to run an offensive team with Gyarados and Jolteon, but I didn't want to run, like, Screaming Hyper Offense, and of course I ran Fortress because I wanted a spinner. And uh, Tyranitar, of course, because Titar, Didi Gera is as classic as it gets, pursuing the Starmies and Rotoms that get in Gyarados' way. Of course, Jolteon can come in on those T-Bolts too, and we'll get to that in a second. And I also wanted to sweep with Lucario, just to have another winning option. Now, uh, sword, at this point, Swords Dance Bullet Punch was the common Lucario set, because it owned Gengar, and Scarf Tar, and Life Orb Arrow. So, there was that. However, uh, so, oh, and the T-Tar, I was running a pretty cool set. I was running Bulky Ice Beam because not only, T-Tar was pulling double duty. Not only was it pursuing for Gyarados, it was pursuing Rotom for Lucario as well, but it was also baiting Gengar, or not Gengar, Gliscor with Ice Beam. Ice Beam, T-Tar, and Lucario is as classic a combo as it gets as well. And so I really love the overlapping offensive synergy here. And, uh... Yeah, at first this was a Stealth Rock Spikes Fortress, but it didn't end up that way. And I think I ran Gyro Ball on it even, which, you know, weird, but, you know, T-Tar was pursuing. I ran Lum for will o Brodom, and it was bulky, so it was going to tank hits from stuff like uh, CB out Night Outrage and stuff like that. So, God knows the spread, but yeah. And I think the Fortress was shiny, actually, and so was the Lucario to fit in with the color scheme. Anyway, so, yeah, see these guys. Anyway, so, the last was originally Gengar because, you know, Spin Blocker, and it was going to, um, you know, switch into Gliscor for free and, you know, turn it into offensive momentum. So if I wasn't ready to lure it with T-Tar, I could turn it into offense with Gengar. And this was good, you know, with, uh, imagine there's rocks on the Fori. I think I used Impish for CB Tar help because I don't want to be switching Lucario into it. Uh, which reminds me how awesome Scarf Lucario is, actually. Anyway, so I uh, use this, roughly, still spit F, because you want to be taking Gengar and stuff, and uh, Surf's. 
But I uh, eventually I switched this because I wanted to use this Celebi. And this Celebi has remained one of my favorite sets on all sorts of teams, balance and offense. And the reason it's great is because it keeps up rocks on uh, Starmie, bulky Starmie pretty much permanently because it can't hurt it at all. And it's also a great offensive check to Suicune, so you know you don't have to worry about not doing enough with T-Bolt at plus one and getting butt blasted by a plus one Hydro Pump. So I love the hell out of this set. It was so good. It covered electric, water, fighting, uh, so a lot of resists. And it was still an offensive threat, and it maintained pressure on other fortress because of HP fire. Now, nowadays, fortress isn't as important, but you still want HP fire just because of the coverage on Skarm and whatnot, especially now that Skarm runs Fizz Def instead of Spit Def. But here, it was nice to have offensive options and the ability to play it slow. Now, so I think this team already has a lot of personality with all the combinations going on. The synergy is flowing everywhere. It's beautiful. This was just a standard GD Gear. I think I ran... It was a taunt DD Gera, because again, pressure on stall. The first time I was going to bring this team was against Heist in round 2 of the Smogan Tour 16, 14 playoffs. And here is the cool part. This, uh, so I'm a sucker for Wish, right? And at first I was like, maybe I'll run Wish on this Jolteon. And I was like, oh no, it's got to be more offensive. And then I realized I could, while... This set, this Jolteon set, is basically the coolest thing ever. I think I ran uh, the Scarf Tar speed in retrospect. I probably should have run, uh, you know, Gara speed. Maybe I did. Who knows? But basically, this Jolteon set is nice because Sub Wish. I had this great game against Ojama for Superstars where it was stalling out his Grass Knotting Cell because Grass Knot took two hits to break the sub because Jolteon is so light. And uh, yeah, so basically this set is awesome because it sub-passes and it keeps your team healthy with Wish and it's just beautiful support and it never eases up on the ability to be an offensive threat because of its huge speed stat and stab Thunderbolt. Not to mention it's, it can be used for defensive purposes now that it can heal itself with Wish. It's not going to go down to a couple Zapdos heat waves, and it can keep itself and Tyranitar healthy to deal with it so it doesn't really matter that uh, Lucario is temporarily walled by it. So... Uh, it's it was a really great set. Wish was great support, so you're not getting worn down by stall and hazards and chip. Especially nice with fortress and uh, sub pass was nice for creating offensive opportunities. And here's the best one. What's the most common offensive offense check to Jolteon? Well, Scarf Flygon is one. You sub on that, and then you lock it into Earthquake. Or if it U-turns, then you scout the switch and you baton pass. Or if it locks an earthquake, then you just go to Gera and set up for free on their Scarfer. That's supposed to be their Gyarados switch. So, or one of their Gyarados checks. So, massive, massive threat. Or, Tyranitar. If Tyranitar comes in on Jolteon and tries to crunch, you pass a sub to Lucario. And Lucario has a quad resist to both crunch and stone edge and thus keeps its sub, and thus it, you've got a Swords Dance Lucario behind a sub against a Pokemon, it outspeeds an Okos. You can get a Swords Dance, you can just attack, it's a massive threat, and oftentimes it was just game over. So I loved the hell out of this team. It had a lot of great results for me, and it had a ton of personality as well. And for that, the synergy is everywhere, the, the cool factor is everywhere, and it was just so much fun to use and it was successful too as it won the smoke and tour game it was uh used in so yeah sub wish bp i i miss this set so much it was so brutal especially because it comes in pretty easily you know throw an electric move at gara uh-oh you just gave jolteon a sub especially against like rest talk rotom where you sub and it can't burn you and it, ugh, yuck you know coming on starmie sub passed here comes lucario with the sub up it's disgusting. Wish also helps because you're not always going to be able to keep rocks off, but it doesn't matter because Jolteon and Gyarados' the synergy isn't just switch to Jolteon on electric move. It's also switch to Gyarados on ground move or, you know, fighting move against Infernape or something. Uh, but Wish keeps it healthy even with stealth rock up. So it's kind of like the Wish Jirachi Gyarados idea. So yeah, Wish Jolteon was just perfect and it just really capped off this team, which I loved for a million reasons. Did I really run Gyro Ball? I feel like I did in my bones, so I'm going to trust that. But yeah, this team was wonderful and a lot of, lot of, lot of fun. All right, so next team, January 2013. Now, Nita Queen didn't really, or no, not, no nonsense. It didn't exist back then. It had a couple use, 
uh, pieces of usage. I remember Heist used it. I'm sure maybe some other Oceana guys did as well. And uh, this... The only time it had been used on a big stage was Ladybug's Hailstall team, which was kind of its own entity. You know, it was special because it was Obama Snow and Spiritomb as well. And uh, Bold Starmie as well, although his was a little faster. But it didn't really popularize it, so I still, you know... Uh, not to be a glory hound or anything. So Ladybug had, took a lot of... Ladybug was ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. But uh, didn't popularize it. As uh, Same with Fatty. Like, this team, now that you see the Skarm, Scarftar, Starmie, Nidoqueen, uh, Rotom, and, you know, the Celebi's a little out of place. But other than that, this could be a team that's used today. So this was way ahead of the curve all the way back in 2011. And he was using Nidoqueen, which is awesome. Back then, you know, Lucario, Subaru, Zapdos with just Toxic, its typing was magnificent. And, uh, yeah, so I wanted to use a team with it because I knew how good it was. And back then, it was used for rocks as well as T-Spikes. Nowadays, it gets spread out a little more. But, uh, yeah, and Fire Blast is a standard over Ice Beam. But, yeah, so... Uh, it was great because you keep up rocks and T-Spikes against Fori, and yeah, so this was a team I was making for an SPL game against Blightbringer, who did not show up, and I played his sub, Twash. So, uh, in one of the best games I've ever had, actually. And maybe I'll do a recreate of that, honestly. Uh, I mean, it's a little arrogant because it's my own, but I just love that game. Anyway, here's the log. I'm aneurysm and uh, using it. this was the first post this was the first post DPP tournament battle I saw that used Nita Queen post DPP meaning after it was no longer the current gen so because Ladybug spammed his hail team a lot but uh, this was where it first really took off now uh, the first big official tournament game that I'm aware of at least and I'd followed it pretty closely so uh, besides you know people using Ladybug's hail team sometimes that was different. Uh, this was like a its own team, not reliant on hail, making it separate. So we've got our Protect Fortress, which I think Fulgorio used, but I uh, started using it because I was like, well, I hate when Fori gets worn down by rocks and having to switch out of Heatran. Well, no longer. And it was really good. It really pulled its weight in that battle, actually. So I uh, enjoyed using it a lot because I didn't need T-Spikes because I had him on Nidoqueen. So... And this way, I didn't have to run Skarm and Starmie. So I ran Gengar just because I wanted it to be a more offensive thing, and here was the dreaded subsplit. And matter of fact, in the game, then it actually does switch into Gliscor a lot. So, and then a Scarf Tar because I love my Scarf Tar. And uh, then some interesting stuff. I had a Sub Call Mine Raikou for some reason. May I think it was Sub Call Mine anyway. It was that. And then I had a Suicune. It was it was on purpose to do the dogs thing, but I ended up running a Surf Ice Beam Rest Talk Suicune just for the sake of you know. In retrospect, maybe Swamper was better, but I like Suicune because it was resilient and it was able to hit Dragonite. You know, I didn't feel I needed Calm Mind, so uh, yeah, and it was hugely important. So. Let me see if I can remember all those nicknames. What, what am I clicking? Oh, control. Yeah, uh, go 10. I think I ran Stonage on this Scarf Tar because I had Suicune and Gengar. And I <laughs> ended up facing a Gliscor, so maybe not. El Tigre. Yeah. Hugan Dugan, I think, and Ojama. These were all my scooter teammates back then. So, uh, yeah. So this was a big team. This was Nita Queen's like first stage, first big DPP stage in establishing it as a true OU Pokemon. Because after this, I wound up using a more stylish approach of this team with uh, Rest Talk Roar Suicune, which is a great set, and Calm Mind Celebi over uh, Raikou. And I switched uh, Gengar to Rotom. And 
so a more st- stallish approach, and I played Osgood in his very early days in the PO ladder a bunch, and the call mine Celebi was always a massive threat, I remembered. Some great games. And eventually I switched over to Paris Song. But yeah, so this was like, yeah, Nita Queen is legit. Uh, so it would be a while. And then a couple months after this, then Heist built his uh, double pink Nita Queen stall team, which helped even more to establish it. And he was using it before I did. As a matter of fact, he was using Protect on it before I did, just for scouting Scarf Flag on. But he, um, so, the, you know, I think it was both of us that were both, uh, helping Nita Queen become the legitimate threat that it now is. So now we're going to zoom ahead for a couple months to the fall of 2013. So I wanted a new team, some offense, because you might have noticed so far, I like a lot of defensive teams. Uh, you know, my semi-stalling, hazard-centric stuff. So I decided to run some offense. So I, uh, I wanted to just run stuff that, sorry, my, I'm starting to zone out a little bit because it's been going on so far and no end in sight. So we got rocks, explosion, and, uh, yeah, Dragon Knight. So this was originally a CB Knight and a mixed tar. But I decided to switch their roles because I felt it would be more flexible. So Titar's pursuit would be stronger, and Dragonite was harder to deal with if it was mixed. And that was definitely the right call. So mixed knight was dangerous, and there was even some there were even some jokes about Lucario being broken with Stealth Rock and mixed knight. And uh, you know, one person in particular. But yeah, this team was great, and. It did really well for me in Smogan Tour 16, regular season, and uh, Lucario was just death. And I used it in a bunch of tournaments. I used it in POCL finals, actually, against Honor, who was known as ABR back then. He's Italian, not the ABR you guys know. But yeah, this was a great team, and uh, Scarf wrote him, yeah. It was kind of like Lizard Man's old Trick Room Bronzong team, but uh, and with Lucario, so it worked. And I remember Heist won a tour with uh, Liz's Trick Room Zong team. Yeah, nostalgia for whenever he listens to this. Anyway, so this is a great team. It had I have a lot of logs with it. Like uh, this one tour, I used it in like every single round, I think. And uh, won the tour. Every round until finals, actually, where I switched it up because I was playing Conflict. So, yeah. This against Soga King. This against Go Ten, which is one of my favorite battles ever. I re- I highly recommend reading this one. It was great. I also like Leftovers on Metagross for Longevity against Jirachi. Uh, round 3 against Temptation. And round 4 against M-Dragon. And the semis log against Destiny Unknown wasn't working. He had a Raikou. I Thunderbolted it, and, th- and Thunderbolted the Suicune coming in. It was great. He had Napoleon and Infernape team, just like mine. So, uh, yeah, I'd recommend reading these. I know, I know, reading logs, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this was the fall of 2013. And then there was another team, which was also offensive. So, you know, helping me mix things up and throw people off. More spec Zapdos and... This time, I took it... You know, I was using Scizor again, but it was Scarf, because Starmie everywhere, Gengar... Irritating. And I wanted to use it alongside Flygon. Now, Choice Band, Scizor, Scarf, Flygon was a great combination for years and years, because they have great synergy together and spam U-turn. But CB Flygon is a massive threat, and it had some... It enjoyed some real popularity in 2013. It kind of fell off after that, but it was really nasty. I think it still has some potential now, as Bada Bing mentioned in a forum post recently, especially if you drop U-turn for Dragon Claw, so it has a more spammable stab mid-game. Plus, you want to be doing damage, not scouting with this. So, uh, yeah, this is more of this, and uh, Heatran with Pasho, and I remember a lot of people just... This is one of those teams that... I made this with Hot and Cold, and it got passed around to a lot of people, and they were like using it without having any ideas who it was. I remember Iconic using it in SPL, and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I think someone mentioned it was yours, but... 
So you have Breloom again for more pressure against Stahl, Heatran with Pasho, Scizor. So this was a great... I mean, this team isn't very good against Zapdos in retrospect, but at the time it was really nasty. It didn't have Blizzard Starmie. But, and, um... Yeah, I, I think I ran... My favorite specs, or rather Pasho Trans spread was max HP, max special attack. So it would take hits, like, from Zapdos. So, uh, yeah. It was three choice... Three U-turn, get Breloom in, pressure, rocks up easily, destroy water types with Pasho and Scarfzor for uh, Starmie. And yeah, very, very nasty team that saw some saw a lot of success uh, in other players' hands as well as my own. So now we'll just go and delete all these and move on to... Uh... Like this team, just really quick, I never used Scarftar and Hippo on the same team. They were always like different teams to me. And then I synthesized them into this one team that ended up being pretty nice. And I used this for uh, PO, Pokemon Online Champions League, so the PO version of SPL, for the uh, semifinals tiebreak. That was a great season of SPL, or uh, POCL. We won the whole thing. And uh, had Venusaur, who was awesome. And I got to use Hippo and Scarftar, and there was a great log of it, actually, against Fetto. And I led Scarftar. Memory gone. But yeah, one of my favorite moments is uh, this one where the Hippo switches into Mix Knight and shrugs it off, and Darren yells fat, because that's what Mix Knight is. And, you know, that's why uh, my opponent was using Mix Knight, because he's like, oh, BKC loves his semi stall, but. Yeah, I was always paranoid of losing the spit off Hippo, but no one besides me ever seemed to use him or understand why he was so perfect. Mix Knight walling it was just beautiful. That's why I used Outrage Mix Knight a couple times. So, uh, a la Salamence. But yeah, uh, that was a great moment. I miss talking in the battle chat. Although it got pretty bad at the end, so, you know, looking at it with the rose tinted glasses just a little bit. Good lord, there's still so much to get through. Alright, let's get to it then. So, we've got... Um, Alright, I made this team with a Trick Iron Ball Gross to play Hot and Cold whoops, uh, in round one of Smog and Tour 16 playoffs. I had some T-Wave spread. I don't know why I decided to do this, but I remember thinking, wow, this team is really synergetic because Scarf Train is nasty, you got the Iron Ball thing, and then, in addition to the support, then your T-Tar isn't just support with Pursuit or whatever, but DD Shuka Tar was really anti-metagame then, it was really nasty, and you, that way you had two huge sweepers instead of just putting it all on the shoulders of Swords Dance Gliscor, so I don't know why that's... oh, Earth Power, whoops. And, uh, yeah, so, this team did really well, and this Gliscor set eventually got Sandvale banned as a whole, as it should have been. And, uh, it was really gross. I credit Bada Bing's team for making it popular. He had this great team with, uh, Trick Ball Gross, but also Rosa Raid, and uh, Scarf Rotom, I believe. So, this was a more offensive version of that. His T-Tar wasn't DD, but... Uh, that was what I, w I was inspired by that, and no spikes, just more para, but uh, this team was really, really nasty. The score is mowing down Zapdoses and shit. So yeah, this was fun, and then I made a second version where the T-Tar became a Sash lead, and I was going to use this version against Malekith, but we didn't end up playing DPP. So... Um, yeah, U-turn, and I changed it to CB Scizor, and the rest was the same. But yeah, and then I gave it to Fakes and he used it in SPL and won. So yeah, Sash Tar, not with this set, it was like some Rocks, Fire Blast stuff. But yeah, that was another uh, good variant. Alright, moving on. Now we're done with the fall of 2013, and we're moving on to spring to mid-2014. So, I always loved Empoleon lead. But I sometimes hated how it had to choose between getting up rocks and killing the opposing lead. So it was just, you know, four attacks. 
we're going with Ice Beam, Grass Knot, Aqua Jet. We want to be able to finish off those Ace Elves. And then we just have Heatran set up the rocks uh, for us, you know, with the classic Pasho set. And Rose setting up some spikes. Then we have Gengar abusing. We have Suicune, and we have Scarf Flygon to clean up. Now, this team had some issues, but it was good. And this is what I gave to Iconic, or not Iconic, to August to use against Somalia in round one of uh, the World Cup of Pokemon. So the date on this is June 19th, 2014. And see, now you don't have to say, oh, is he going to attack me? Or is he going to set rocks? You just attack. And Empoleon just dished out so much pain and eat a nasty crit there, but it doesn't matter because now Heatran comes in and gets up the rocks. So, uh, yeah, I think you had a CB flag on there. Anyway, moving on. Oh, I had a second version of this team, actually, that I used, made after tweaking some stuff. So, August and I were t messing around with Heist's offensive Milotic, which he showed was excellent. I still think, well, not so much these days, because I think Milotic's defenses are needed more, but uh, especially in the Clefable era. But uh, back then, it was a great set. Modest was viable, too. You could run some bulk on it. You could run HP Electric at Ongera or Hypnosis, but I like HP Electric. And we were using it on a bunch of different teams. And I was like, you know what? It works here. And then uh, I wanted Scarf Lucario last as a better T-Tar buffer, because T-Tar was not so fun to switch into, and Lucario is a pretty nice switch in when it's scarfed, and I like Blaze Kick for, uh, for Scizor, but yeah, um, and, you know, Ice Punch and Stone Edge, of course, for, uh, Dragonite and Gyarados, I don't think Thunder Punch is that worth, but yeah, uh, you could run Crunch if you wanted, or other stuff, so, uh, that was the second version of the team, and this is what I used against Iconic in uh, like round three or four of a Smogan Tour. And once again, Empoleon owning the opposing lead without worrying about not being able to get up rocks. You know, he gets up, he switches out, but now I go right to Heatran and get up the rocks before... Actually, no, I HP Grass because I, want, I was afraid of Arrow coming in before... He got up rocks again. Uh, before I got up rocks, so he could get up his, but he just went to star me, which is, you know, same difference. Um, and I think maybe I was running double... No, no, I wasn't running double rocks on this team. Oh, that ho oh, remix, wonderful. Anyway, so you can watch that, because all the links will be in the description. Moving on... Or the Kimono Girl remix, rather. Alright, so here we have... I wanted to use Bleed, but just a more offensive direction. So, you know, offense... So, the Hippo was going to stay the same. I wasn't going to use CB or something. It was always going to be good old Spadef, just because it's such an anchor. But I uh, changed Roserade to be fast. Toxic Spikes, yeah. Uh, not Toxic Storm. And HP Fire. And, yeah, just roughly this. And then Starmie was offensive two. And Arrow was life orb. This set we uh, went over earlier. Not taunt there. Pressure there. Taunt roost. Edge. Not double edge. Stone edge. Earthquake. And, um... Oh, Rotom, obviously. And I wanted this to be choice specs. I figured I would just use Arrow as a pseudo Scarfer, and it worked. But at first, I had Scarf Heatran. Uh, no, wait, no, no, no. Sorry. At first, I had Super Rachi because the original team had Jirachi, and so I was like, "Yeah, sure." Uh, CM HP Fire this old Jirachi set, just because I wanted fire coverage, because uh, I think the team needed it more, and you know, spread like this roughly. But eventually, I just changed it to Scarf Tran, and just because Scarf Tran was so good. And uh, it was nice. So this was a great team. Aug used it in World Cup, and I forgot to... No, wait, I did not forget to pull up the replay prior. 
so yeah, here it is. This is 199 using a CB bat, and Hippo shrugs it off, and Ice Fang's on the thing, but yeah. Yeah, so here we see Spex Rotom. I just wanted to show off the power. And uh, the Scarf Tran version ended up being better than the Super Rachi version. And uh, Arrow with its speed against Starmie is nice. And Scarf Spex Rotom. So, yeah. So there, that was that. So now we move on to... A team that was very unique. I once brought it against Heist in a test game. I used it in a couple tournament games as well, like Frontier and POCL, and it was nice. But the thing that annoyed Heist in that test game was that, I had no way of knowing this of course, but he brought a team of three electrics. I think he had Zapdos, Rotom, and Jolteon. And he had a... Uh, every single Pokemon on this team checks electrics in some way. Now, technically, Gliscor isn't really used as an electric check because they almost always have HPAs, but it also taunts will o wisp Rotom, so kind of it does. And this was a Spideff Heatran. I think it was Rest Talk, which is an awesome set. Did I just run out of Johto remixes? No, I didn't. Cool. And, uh, yeah, the last Pokemon on this team was Gastrodon, which I wanted to try... And as a pseudo swamper, now Storm Drain doesn't work, it doesn't have a water immunity in DPP, but Sticky Hold is still nice because it's immune to Trick, and nowadays knockoff, but yeah. And uh, we always use East Gastrodon because we're on the right side of Mount Coronet. And basically the idea here is, well, I've got hazards elsewhere, and I can, I had them both on Nidoqueen, which wasn't the most optimal or whatever. I probably should have even stuck them on T-Tar, if not also Tran, but, you know, hindsight six years later. So what I wanted to do was use it like a Swampert, uh, and Physical Defense Gastron is a massive tank. It's really hard to break for stuff like uh, Mixed Knight, T-Tar kind of team, especially DD-Tar and uh, CB even. So Gastron would just barely hold on against a lot of offense. You pretty much had to have Breloom. That's why I had Rest Talk E-Tran to Sleep Absorber against Breloom before walling it with my Impish Ice Fang Gliscor, which I was uh, I took Q for Modal Wi-Fi Battle, where the Gliscor had Aerial Ace to start handling Breloom, and then I was like, you know what, Ice Fang is better. And if you're really desperate against Breloom, Wing Attack nowadays, because you don't need to, because that's more PP. So, I don't, those were not my EVs. Why did I just put that? I'm totally tripping. Anyway, so yeah, Gastrodon was a great wall, and I just used it as a kind of Swampert with, uh, yeah, Heist used a lot of Gastrodon himself. He actually used one in a uh, Smoking Tour match a couple months after I used this team. And you could do stuff like Mirror Code or Counter or Protect even. But uh, it's also light, so it lives a plus one Jirachi Grass Knot, and it's not afraid of Grass Knot Infernape at all. So yeah, this team was a lot of fun. And of course you had Leech Protect Shaman to be annoying. So yeah, this team wasn't like the most optimal thing in the world, but it wasn't supposed to be. And it was actually still a pretty good team in its own right, so I liked it a lot. Uh, three ground types is pretty dope too, and you know, despite having its flaws, then I should probably put HP Ice on Shaman for D Knight, and yeah, Gastrodon just was a tank, and it was awesome. All right, now time for a fun offensive team. Now, uh, Heist is the progenitor of Custap Berry on a lot of Pokemon, including Metagross and Machamp, and I followed him and threw it on stuff like Roserade, and uh, he actually used Custap Heatran as well. But I threw it on stuff like Roserade and uh, T-Tar more prominently, but I had a great Smoking Frontier game against Helpona where I switched my Roserade into his plus two Gyarados' Waterfall and Custat Berry Leaf Storm. Killed it. Highlight of a career. But uh, T-Tar was my better Custap invention. But yeah, he was using Metagross and Machamp, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and uh, try my own hand at that. So Custap, just because they get down to low HP and then they can deliver a final devastating blow. What is this... Oh, it's just quiet, okay. And I decided to make a super HO team while Heist was spamming Azelf and Jirachi kind of stuff, sub Jirachi. Then I decided to take it in a setup direction. Uh, so DD Knight, Triple Dragon Dance as it were. 
So they had an easy time cleaning up uh, thanks to the damage that Metagross... Metagross would get up rocks, boom, something Machamp comes in, does more damage with rocks up. I love Machamp with rocks already up. And sand, too. That's why a rocks lead T-Tar plus Machamp is beautiful. And then, you know, they're kind of frail, and sometimes they need a second push. Boom, Cresselia with dual screens. I use this in, uh, actually, some Smoke and Tour games and some Smoke and Classic games against, like, Marshall, and it was successful as hell, and... Case spanned this team a lot when he almost won two DPP Smogan Tours in two days. And, uh, yeah, this team was brutal. I think I used, like, max speed or something. Uh, just because it's actually pretty fast, and maybe I should have used some speed investment or special attack investment. Let's just split it somehow. And I think everything was shiny, too, because it was awesome. So, yeah, this team just, uh, rocks, boom. Um, so yeah, this team had insane amounts of pressure, and, you know, Cresselia gets to fall back and heal something up after putting up screens, so it was, <laughs> the synergy was just disgusting, and I have some tournament games with it. Uh, here is, I used it, actually, there was a round robin Smog and Tour final between myself, Draco Malfoy, or now known as Tamahome, or Tamahome, and Stathicus, and in the first round... I beat Tama and lost a stat, so we played again, and so I played both of them again. And in the first round, this was the first game against Tama, I uh, used the Custap offense, and it was great. And Tama was using this Blissey, Jolteon, Gera team he had, which is always pretty cool. And... Yeah, so Machamp went a little wild here, but even with that, then Lum Dragonite sets up and does a ton of damage and kills stuff, and... Agility, you know, Agility Gross preys on frail offense, and now here comes Cresselia. S and Reflects, and Healing Wishes, and they had Healing Wish mechanics bad here, because Gyarados is supposed to take rocks and then get Healing Wished, so... Uh, this was, you know, what's the date on this? November 1st, 2014. So yeah, um... Maybe I should have Healing Wished Met or Lunar Dance Metagross anyway. But it doesn't matter, as it takes... Nothing. And... Yeah, so that was the first game. I just love the hell out of this team, because it's so unlike what I usually love to bring. Um, let's see, what else is there? Here's the second one. This one is also against Tama. And I think we actually had a very... S no, we had a... Oh, shit, I clicked on the wrong link. No, I clicked on the same link twice. Damn it. Alright, well, we, we played again, and he used uh, a different team. He used, like, this Trick Room Executor team, because we were exhausted. So the one against Stath is way more interesting, because it's Custap Metagross, so it doesn't get... Uh, it's a Lum against Rosary, but it's fine, because you just stay in, and then, you know, you DD on it with it, because if it has HP Fire, it doesn't hit Dragonite at all, and you got Lum for Sludge Bomb Poison, which was rare, not the norm at all, so... So T-Spikes are actually annoying, but that is what Cresselia is for. That was what was so nice about this team, that you didn't really have to worry about taking damage, because you could always... Not only does taking damage get you down to Custap in two cases, but... Or mostly Machamp's case, because uh, Metagross doesn't get hit by Toxic or Sand. But because you could always heal yourself up with Cresselia. And here we see... this. You know, Custap was a lot nastier when unexpected. But you know, here we see it picking off a Rotom. So... And uh, he's got a curse pert, which is pretty nasty. And yeah, so lunar dancing to wake up Metagross, I thought was pretty cool, and not immediately earthquaking, but or not immediately exploding, but earthquaking, just to uh, yeah. And now another Custap. So this team was just wonderful. Alright, so that was the Custap team, one of my favorites of all time. So now we're going to jump over again to some stuff I actually forgot chronologically. We have to go back like like a month, you know, but still. Uh, so uh, the Custap boys, my favorite. So this was a team, this was where I 
decided, you know what, Suicide Roserade, T-Spikes can be useless, let's use Spikes and T-Spikes and bring double the pain. That was the first time that was really used. And uh, so we threw them together and we used Energy Ball because it hits Rotom Forms harder. Not really relevant, but I figured Grass Knight was probably better, but yeah. So we just lay up the hazards, and then, you know, I wanted to be very anti-stall. So, this is a trick Iron Ball Gross to ruin Rotoms and Starmies and Skarmories alike. Now you gotta, maybe you just, um, run Hearth, Earth, uh, sorry, Heat Proof Bronzong. To, you know, not bother not having your, just to get something out of it while you're grounded. But... Uh, he proved Bronzong as an offensive lead is also awesome, by the way, but that's a whole different story. Anyway, so then I figured with uh, Life Orb, yeah, I made this with and for Aug for World Cup. And I figured with uh, with Starmie being crippled by Bronzong, as it's going to take that opportunity to come into it, then Gengar is a much better choice, and Heatran goes berserk. I had this new set I wanted to try to. It didn't get. Uh, I, th I don't remember what the fire stab was, but the perk was metal sound, which meant you were not walling it one on one, even with Blissey, especially not with uh, hazards down. I mean, you you could say taunt or whatever, but I liked metal sound a lot. And uh, to force more switches, and I thought it was a little more efficient than taunt, especially if you can't get T spikes down against Blissey, like if it's partnered with a Nita Queen or something. So. Uh, and then Offensive Milotic, this was the first time we used it, and it was awesome. And uh, HP Electric. And then the last was Scarf Raikou, which is a set that Legendary 07, aka Toby 10, used. And it was uh, a great set. Unexpected as hell, great cleaner, strong, faster than the base 100 Scarfers, so Flygon and Jirachi, mostly, uh, sorry, mostly Flygon, so great cleaner. And then there are variations of this team that I played with, like, um, like different Heatran sets and Raikou, or Jolteon over Raikou, and, you know, making the Raikou offensive call mine, Heatran Scarf, and stuff like that. And obviously you can use, like, Suicune and stuff, but I thought this team was very creative in its approach to hazard stacking, and it's still one of my favorites today, it's just... Uh, beautiful to look at and it was really powerful and let's look at the game it was used in so uh, this was against Malekith on July 20th 2014 so yeah see I even if Heatran did hit that fire blast then b for getting up rocks it was gonna take spikes and two spikes and a toxic spike and that was the idea of the Roserade lead uh, if it's suicided, and even if he decided to preserve the rose, then he's going to have spike, uh, a spike and a T-spike, and that's great to start off the game. So offensive Milo is nasty, and uh, Hydro Pump, Skarm doesn't want to take it, and this was Bold Starmie, as you see from Milo, which you know got popular thanks to me and Fakes spamming it and spreading the word. Fakes told M-Dragon about it, and uh, then M-Dragon used a lot of Fakes, Bold Starmie balance teams. And of course, the semi-stall teams that I was making and spread around had Bold Starmie as well. I think I used it on Bleed too. But uh, point being that it's faster here because uh, Milotic has uh, Bold Starmie generally goes to just above Lucario and Tim and Heatran. And since Bol uh, Tim and Milotic goes to up to 287 to handle things like Dragonite, then you get to outrun an HP Electric, and that was just a glorious, glorious moment. So. Now Bronzong comes in, tricks, so Rotom gets Iron Balled, tricks back, which was pretty funny as it gets up rocks, trick again, and, you know, Gyro Ball, and now here's a beautiful sight, Rotom taking max hazards, getting poisoned by T-Spikes, let's look at it again, uh, not that turn, but Rotom getting poisoned by T-Spikes and taking three layers of spikes, <laughs> look at it, let's look at it one more time. Poisoned spikes. Okay, I'm done now. And uh, Raikou being awesome. Shadow balling, and even though. And Milotic is a great r offensive response to Heatran. And uh, 
that obviously gets worn down. And oh, I use flamethrower. That's nice. Yeah, to be reliable with metal sound, that makes sense. So yeah, Malika's team is good. It's uh, but it was just a sign of how nasty this team was, I think. And Rotom cleans it up without Gengar even having to come out. So yeah, did exactly what it was supposed to. That's always a great feeling. That's that's one of the reasons I love team building so much. When a team works exactly as you designed it to, then it's wonderful. Of course, there's also just team building, just a team build. Anyway, so another team I made around this time that I didn't give to Aug, but uh, he didn't use it until like a year later in World Cup against Phil7086, actually. And it was still a great team. But this team was meant to be very anti-offense. So we got Nita Queen and a Bomba Snow. So taking a leaf out of Ladybug's book, but I also wanted to run Sand, because Scarf Tar is near essential, in my opinion, and then we've got the Starmu, we've got the Rotom, uh, with Rest Talk to handle Breloom, not that this team was amazing against Breloom, but I had a Shadow Ball and Reflect, so yes, it was very anti-Breloom. And, uh, yeah, so the idea of the team was simple. Need a queen, T spikes kill, and then uh, Obama Snow. One of my most formative Pokemon experiences playing Haldar, a French legend, in season 10 of Smogan Tour. I was running some standard CBS Elf Suicune Heatran offense, and his Obama Snow destroyed me. I got worn down quicker than you can say, Jack. And that was the idea of this team. And obviously, that's why Ladybug was successful. He wasn't even running a Hail Stall team, though. He was running his legendary Crobat, Gliscor, Breloom, Heatran, Starmie, Obama Snow team. I don't know how I recited that so fast after not thinking about it for however many years, but <laughs> it was a great team. A lot of other French players used it. He even got counter-teamed once by Eternal, who was using HP Fire Suicune just for the stupid Obama Snow. It was so dumb. Uh, but yeah, that was the idea that Obama Snow um, and, you know, Nita Queen, a solid team. So this was very anti-offense. And the final piece that was anti-offense was Bronzong, because that DD Tar I mentioned earlier, the anti-metagame one, the Stone Edge Earthquake Ice Punch Shuka Berry variant, completely walled by Bronzong, and that's what I was trying to take advantage of. Protect Zong, I knew to be a really nasty wall and way of keeping it healthy from Earthworm's team. So I forget what set I used on it, but that, this was the basic idea, and it did really well. And... I was not the not a very good team against other defense at all, but the idea was that uh, you would just outstall offense or be able to play around it with ease because they were getting chipped so hard. So there's this SPL game uh, between Fakes, who I gave the team to, and Marshall. I used it in a couple tour games myself. Actually, I used it in that tournament uh, round robin finals against Stath, and uh, so there was that one as well. So yeah, Obama so just completely blanks. Empoleon, who gives a lot of trouble to a lot of non-Blissey teams. And see, Obama still getting worn down so hard. you got to be careful because T-Tar coming in on Protect is one of the most standard ways of dealing with it. But then Nita Queen comes in, gets up Hazards, even though it's taking a lot from T-Spikes. And now Bronzong comes in. And see, that's the, so that's the idea. Obama Snow and Bronzong together are so nasty. And uh, T-Tar is nice to make sure that your Bronzong actually heals. <laughs> so sometimes you want Hail, sometimes you want Sand. Uh, but yeah, so major, major threat. So here he goes to T-Tar. That was a great move on Fakes' end because T uh, Rotom will not run, or rather Lucario will not run Crunch and Bullet Punch because you need extreme speed for coverage. Otherwise you get revenged by things like non mock Punch Infernape, which is just ridiculous. And uh, even like um, Waters a lot more easily. Faster Waters, like Starmie, which is uck. So he goes to Scarf Tar and he forces it to Bullet Punch and if he does then he's going to get walled by Rotom, so... Uh, Draco Meteor Mist, that really sucked, but and I won't deny that it hurt him a lot, but the entire point is that this team uh, was very anti-offense with all the... And you saw the chip damage, and Marshall's team is insanely threatening. Marshall was a real threat back then. I don't know how much he still plays now, but he's always been a really dangerous offensive player, and this was like him at his peak, and this just shows how naturally nasty this team was against that style. As see, Bronzing is also another devastating offensive Pokemon with a leech and the everything and uh, yeah so at that point the game was over because of Scarf Tar with a superpower so yeah 
So yeah, there was that team I used a lot. I remember I used it in Frontier a lot when I was a brain, and like facing Jabba's team, like his Spec Zapdos, Suicune, uh, Heatran, Jirachi, Titar, Mixtar offense. I mean, it was a great team, but you know, it's just so difficult to deal with the Bomb Snow and Bronzong, and T Spikes too. So yeah, I was a huge fan of that one. So moving on, back to some offense. I really liked, I was just messing around with some offense in Frontier, I wanted to use both Heatran and Infernape, so we're back to the, let's say, I think August of 2014, so I wanted to use Specs, Zapdos, and CB Ape, and Heatran with a Scarf, because that was the strongest set, and then, so remember how earlier I said how basically every single strong Pokemon fits into that offensive structure on the bulky SD Scizor team, well, here is a shining example, because, look, just he, Infernape over here, and it, it was a great team. Uh, here's a log I have against 199 lives for POCL, where it was great. Uh, specs, really nasty. Gets up rocks. Fire blast. Lots of stuff happens. And, uh, Yeah, it was a massive, massive threat. And... So, I think I was running Modest Scarf Train, actually, with some bulk, which is why that Mach Punch only does 61. I think. It might have been another team. I know on the Hippo team, actually, the Hippo Life Orb Arrow team, I was running Modest Scarf Train because I could just run rely on Arrow to be fast as well. And the only things I wouldn't be outspeeding were other Arrow and Jolteon, but I didn't care about it all. And, you know, Starmie and Gyarados was fine. But yeah, so this team was really nasty. I loved using it in Frontier. And then I shifted it a little bit, and I basically made the same th team, but with Mixed Knight over um, Infernape. And it was also great, because it it was similarly threatening. And I mean, this team just locked down Stall. But it also got absolutely... Uh, it also had defensive utility, because uh, Dragonite has a lot better bulk and resistances like to fighting. And can switch it on stuff like uh, CB or Choice Earthquakes and Water Moves. So and can take like a Gengar Shadow Ball. So yeah, this team was really nasty, and I have a replay of it in I guess Tama for a No Johns DPP tour. And see, it's just pressure on the old Fortress style of stall. Like this kind of team that I was helping make popular thanks to the Rocks Mixed Tar and the the pressure on Fortress at every angle. This is the reason why Fortress stopped being popular. I mean. This is fall of 2014, Fortress was still being used, and, you know, this kind of doll team, it just falters against Fori, or Fori just falters against these kind of very standard, very easy to use offensive teams too, even like Rest Hog Gyarados is threatened by everything, so, uh, yeah, I wasn't using Spec Zapdos anymore, I was using Magnet, sometimes I used Lum for Roserade lead, but Magnet was also really good, because that was a set Panamaxis used, and then Heist used, and it allows a lot more flexibility while still being really strong. So, uh, yeah, see, there's just, like, no room for Fori to do anything. And this was a great stall team that Tama was running. It was really successful before, but now it's just, you know, yeah. Uh, and Breelum alone is a threat, and... So I was running Leech Seed. This was actually the birth... This team was the birth of Mach Punch Breloom, which has now become a super standard set, which I was really proud of. I completely forgot about that. And I was originally running Leech Mach to pick stuff off and harass Stall more, but eventually it was like, well, I can just run the Super Power Loom, which is really good, and I can just run Mach Punch in the last slot and Revenge Kill everything in its mother. And that became a standard set, and that was another... That was one of my proudest... Uh, Accomplishments, accomplishments slash contributions to DPP. So, um, yeah, there was that. And we're just going to finish this off because it's basically over. But, uh, yeah, so there was very little that could be done there. And that was an example of just why this team became, this style of team became the standard and this kind of team died out. So, moving on. Did I run out of Johto remixes? Shit, already? All right. I'll go with the... Uh, Oh, what the hell, let's just go with Hoenn. Okay, moving on, who do we got next? Um, oh, this is a team that I thought was cool because 
McMangan used to give me a hard time for always talking about cool stuff and not using it as much, which I always thought was a little bit unfair and not fully seeing the whole picture, but I get where he was coming from. Because, I mean, look, how many semi-stallish teams have I shown you today? And uh, for this, I really liked it because this team was something I brought to the first round of DPP Cup, or like second or something, and it used some cool stuff, and I just made it, and it not only did I use some cool stuff to uh, good effect in a tournament setting, but it was also one of those games where the team worked exactly how I expected it to. So Shuka and Polion is an old great support set because it has such great resistances and you let it take an earthquake against a Dragonite or whatever. And the set can be customized. You can run three attacks like Grass Knot or HP Electric or Roar, Knock Off, whatever. And just, you know, sub a spread like this. And it's really nice. I just ran it as a different kind of stealth rocker on T-Spike's offense because nobody was nobody ran Empoleon. It was like Swampert or Heatran 99.9% .9 of the time. And I figured the extra pressure on Starmie will be really nice. And uh, the ability to check Earthquake users and water types, unlike Heatran, will be a major boon and take pressure off of me in a significant way by letting my Stealth Rocker do so much more. So here's the standard Subsplit Gengar, here's Subru Zapdos with HP Ice, which was more of a threat, and uh, Thunderbolt, HP Ice, because Gliscor and just, you know, grasses in general, Breloom, even though Sub naturally own, annoys Breloom a lot, but yeah, so Timid, it just, whatever spread I used, I, I messed around with some bulk, I'm pretty sure, but who knows how much, so let's just say this much. And maybe some defense, who knows. And probably less speed too, knowing me. So then I ran Sub Call Mine Jirachi with Flash Cannon. Not Flash, Flash Cannon. And... He was also really gross, or for the opponent because it would hide behind subs and not succumb to T-waves and body slams from defensive Jirachi, the Wish Protect variants. Sub call mine Jirachi is still a nasty threat today. And had a lot of pressure, a lot of good defenses. And here was something else that I was really proud of. And I actually, uh, it actually wound up being useful in the game. Roost on Scarf Flygon. I think I came up with this, I'm pretty sure. Maybe someone else did. I know like Smith and some other guys came up with Toxic on Scarfman, which is really nice. And I, I came up with Dragon Claw, just so you revenge kill Kingdra and Gengar without having to and sacrifice your Flygon. But the whole idea of Scarf uh, Roost on the Scarfgon was that, well, my Heatran answers aren't really that great. So And Flygon is a great check to it, you know, barring Will-O-Wisp, but you got to be careful with Empoleon and whatnot. Probably ran HP Ground on Roserade, I'm hoping. Maybe some special attack investment on Zapdos. But the idea was against like, offensive Heatran, Flygon can actually be used to switch in on it and roost up. And so it's not a Scarfer that's getting worn down really quickly and can only do it a couple times. You can actually do it repeatedly. And as dumb as Roost Scarf Flygon sounds, it was really good. And I was really proud of myself for not only thinking of it, but actually using it in the game and having it be useful. Because I've always struggled with actually believing that some of my wilder ideas will actually work. And so this was validating, let's say. Um, let's see, what else is there? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what's next. So uh, now this was, now we are in 2015, if I forgot to mention that. This was an early 2015 team. And uh, so now we're in the spring of 2015, and I make this team, which I quite like. And it was simple, it was just some offense, uh, offense, bulky offense with a good enough core that I could afford to run two very offensive Pokemon in the last slot without really sacrificing defense. Like, if these four are not generally sturdy against a lot of stuff, then it's not going to work. But they did. So, uh, this team actually got passed around quite a bit. And it was really nice. So, Spikes Raid, which is nice with the fighting types and T-Tar, which uh, usually was Scarf. And uh, this was actually where I came up with Colbert HP Ice Rotom, just to Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, and HP Ice is nasty for Gliscor, who thinks, oh, Will-O-Wisp Rotom, I'll wall that. And it was a fast, it was a flexible Rotom set that was able to mess with Tyranitar, and I really liked that about it. 
and this kind of set became popular after this team. And so I used a CB Ape and Scarf Tar, and originally I had uh, Agilagross, which was really nice actually. I love cleaning up with it. But Lucario was able to Sword Dance and clean up both offense and stall, whereas Agilagross was not that great against stall. So this was a simple team, but very nice, and I used it in uh, a round robin tour final against PNF. Here, we'll just breeze, breeze through it. So I was afraid of getting boomed. And there's the Cobra Berry, and it escapes. It's not about burning the Weavile, because I don't care about the Weavile. I just want to get up, get the rocks, and preserve Rotom as a sack later, because this team, kind of team is going to have to sack, but it's worth it to get your big offensive threats back in, the Infernape and the Lucario. So see, that, it was worth it just to get all this chip on it. And now, you know, Swamper comes back, and Starmie has to deal with all this stuff, and it gets killed for basically nothing, and... Did I get up rocks? No, I didn't. Smart me. So, see now, Infernape. And I have to do some nasty switching, but it's worth it because it's going to get worn down by Lucario, and I even bait a Mach Punch. And, wow, I was doing great back then. <laughs> and uh, Lucario and Infernape are going to finish it off. So, uh, yeah, this is a very simple team, very fun, very good in most matchups. So yeah, I really, really liked it. Moving on to, oh, I think I forgot. Damn it, I'm going slightly out of chronological order again. Damn it, did I? Yeah, yeah, I did. All right, so for uh, World Cup, and I don't have the replay because I don't have it on hand, but uh, for those who remember, um, my game against Toph that I've referenced in the Clefable video. You know, what, let's just keep it simple. I wanted to make another T-Spikes offense team. I love T-Spikes offense. You know, Roserade, Swampert. I, I felt like I was always able to wiggle out of tight spots with them. So, Sander, EQ, Swampert, yada yada. And uh, Rotom Wash or Heat, I forget. Let's just say Scarf Wash. And what was nice about this team was that there was a double electric attack. So, you had Zapdos without having to run Gengar and then still have a Scarfer. So that was really nice. And Zapdos without... It, the team was offensive enough to not bother needing a, um, a, a spinner for Zapdos. And if it did need some help, then we had Wish Call Mind Jirachi, which, was n which pretty much disappeared five years prior. Or let's say, let's say four. I think that's fair. Four, maybe three. Uh, so, Wish Call Mind, I think I ran Timid, it doesn't really matter, it was max HP in some capacity. And then an offensive Heatran, because Scarf was everywhere, Scarf was the best set, so you bluff it, you kill one thing, or you lock into one thing, and then you surprise kill another. And of course it's nasty for opening up, uh, for surprising with HP Grass, because Scarf does not run HP Grass, it runs HP Ice. And uh, then you destroy Swampert. And, uh, yeah, so there's that, and it's a great team, August used it against Goten World Cup, and it did, it performed really well. I can't, oh wait, no, I do have it here, nice, thank god. Okay, so I, I wasn't freaking out about, uh, the chronology, or about not having it, so yeah, here it is. So... It was HP Ice Rose rated there, that's interesting. So here you see a lucky Fire Blast crit, actually, with the T-Spikes pushing it over the edge, but the idea is that, you know, thinks it's locked in and just explodes. So that was the idea. So, you know, get the kill, and then explode on the D-Knight. So then Zap Zapdos is a major threat to Goten's team, regardless with the T-Spike down. You know, get the rocks. And see, look, at there's... it's. Uh, struggle just to take it out. And the Flash Cannon sub... Wish call, no, this is the Wish Call Mind Jirachi. Sub Call Mind was a different team. So, uh, yeah. Usually I use Psychic, but on this team I decided... Uh, with Heatran and Zapdos and Rotom, I figured we needed more T-Tar overload, so there's less room for Tar to smack Swamp around with a Banded Crunch. So, this was a really nice team. Uh, another cool team... This was... Oh, uh, another cool team that I don't have to rebuild, because we already have it, is... Moltres? Did we rebuild it? No, shit, we only... 
this was what it was inspired by. So, okay, so we'll go back and go over it again. So uh, this was just a fun team to mess around with, with Stealth Rock, two spinners, Don Fan and Tentacruel, and uh, Wish Protect Jirachi, and Rotom Mo, just to be cool, I think, and Subroost Moltres, and it was actually pretty good. I used it in a couple fun things, and it was actually nasty. Wouldn't have, and some people actually brought it to tournaments because it was like, I used to have this silly team I made with August that was like testing Mesprit and Hitmontop and Abomasnow, about Expert Belt Abomasnow, and like Specs Kingdra, and people took it seriously and thought, oh, this is a good team because BKC and August Band. It's like, no, we were dicking around. I think the same thing happened with this team, except this team actually has pretty decent matchups sometimes. So yeah, uh, but that was, that was a fun one. So another one, I called this one Calling after the song from The World Ends With You. And it was a blast. It was Sash Tar for momentum against offense. It was this old uh, Jirachi set that doesn't get much use anymore. Sidekick, and then Grass Knot, I think, for Swampert. I had Mix, Expert Belt, Infernape. No Life War, because screw Sand. Just the classic set. And uh, then Gyarados with DD. And eventually I switched. I went from DD to CB eventually. And Scarf Gone. And then the last rotated. It used to be Rock Polish Rhyperior. And then I messed around with Scarf Scizor and Trick Band Bronzong and Metagross. But eventually my favorite was Mamoswine. So, um, yeah, it was. Oh, no, not a, no, Oblivious, which is useless. But yeah, Mamoswine has big upside. Big downside, but also big upside. So it was fun, and uh, Scizor and Jirachi, uh, or, no, not Jirachi, Metagross, and um, Rhyperior was also fun, but not that good. Uh, let's see, the replays I have for this team, which were a blast. Oh, this was for Superstars against Finch. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so there's the nickname, the calling, as Frostlass goes down. Jirachi comes into Swamper because I have Grass Stop, and I know he knows, so just... Let's me get up rocks. I think this is the uh, Rhyperior version that I'm using. And just offense. And HP Fire, because I was using... Oh, I was using GK HP Fire, not Thunderbolt. The other Super Rachi coverage. Because T-Bolt Grass Knot is, was a good set, but this was a smarter call by me then. Nice work, Kev. Way back then. Uh, so... That must be an ad. There's no way that's in the remix. No, it is a remix. Okay. Anyway, so... Yeah, more stuff happens. Live a Draco. Here's Rhyperior. And I thought he was switching to Rotom, but I should have just Earthquake. But he roars and Grass Knot and... Stuff. Okay, so... Uh, more replays of this team, because this team was just so much fun to use. Uh, this was DPP Cup 1 Finals uh, for the Round Robin, and I should have made my T-Tar faster than Empoleon lead. I don't know why I didn't, because I assumed other Empoleons would be slower, so I got a little lucky there. And, you know, this one's not as interesting. HP Fire Jirachi connecting on Scizor is a lot more interesting, but other than that, it's just Gyarados DDing a couple times and sweeping, so... And uh, finally, then, I had this Superstar Semis game against Tsung, and he had another Empoleon, and I... Oh yeah, I ditched the Sash on T-Tar sometimes for Expert Belt to be more threatening, especially because sometimes I uh, use HP Grass on it. But yeah, here's an example of Akaberry Jirachi being awesome, and I use it to get up rocks because I can just switch to Gyarados after, instead of... Uh, you know, killing the Infernape, which maybe have been worth it. Who knows? I just wanted rocks. And this was the Scarf Scizor variation, or variant. And I forgot that, uh... I, I messed up my Scizor set somewhere here, but it was luckily still enough. Oh yeah, he, uh... This is a Stath team that he, uh, made, and... Raindance Rose... No, and I got crit, but... Oh, yeah, I had Mamoswine there, too. Oh, I had Scizor and Mamoswine over Flygon. That's an interesting variant. Anyway, yeah, this team was a blast. And it was lots of fun. 
which is the same thing, I realize. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Alright, my next team, for my next team, I will... Yeah, thank god I decided this would only be DPP because this is going to be like three hours. Alright, so we've got Machamp. No, we've got that. Oh, uh, let's see. What else is there? Oh, here is a team, another semi-stall team that I thought was interesting. The idea is that, so earlier, so um, on the Drifter team, then one of the ideas was that Gliscor would lure in Starmie and make it easier to deal with so uh for heatran but an another idea of this team was basically to get heatran and swampert in by the time hazards were already up so starmie would have a lot harder of a time breaking them down um or a lot harder time taking advantage of them because if starmie comes in as you're setting up a hazard and there's nothing else then there's no pressure on it but if uh, there's already hazards up then it's really nasty because they both have roar, so they can roar. They can force Starmie to recover. They can force it to. Uh, they can force Starmie to recover. They can with an attack. They can force it out again with a roar. So it was really nice, and this was an awesome. This is an opportunity to use an awesome pert set, which is protect and roar, fully capitalizing on Swampert's walling abilities by not making it use Stealth Rock. And the way you get hazards up without Starmie coming in is use two hazards Pokemon that Starmie doesn't want anything to do with. So Titar and Roserade. And I really love the synergy on this team. Now I went back and forth between U-Turn Gliscor, which is nice for all the usual reasons, and uh, Scarf Rotom. Sometimes I wanted Rest Talk. And I think, no, I used Rest Talk Heatran because I wanted the Sleep Absorb, for sure, uh, against Breloom. And then I think I went with a Wing Attack Gliscor, which is a shame, because I would have loved to have U-Turn, but, you know, the defensive thing was more important. Could have been, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ice Fang as well. So, yeah, that was good. And also, there being hazards up by the time Swamper comes in means it's harder for Loom to switch in, because suddenly your Ice Beam is actually threatening it with Sand Up and all the hazards. So, uh, that was really nice. This was a great team, and... Had some nice results, and yes, yeah, so moving on uh, to an offensive team with CB Azelf, because I was like, this thing with Adamant, it Oko's frigging offensive, um, which replay do I have with this? The one versus Remedy, or, yeah, okay, I should really get the second one. One second. Yeah, okay, I got it. So let me... Alright, so uh, this team was just me wanting to kick some shit in with some good Pokemon. So uh, let me just pull up that second replay for later. Yeah, so I wanted to use some... CBA is up because it kills stuff, and I, uh, so with Adamant, so it Oko's Metagross, I believe, even max HP, about 81.3% of the time, technically a little higher because of crits, so I used another Shuka Empoleon, which was great, I think I used Aurora on it, uh, Rocks, of course, I used Scarf Tar and the Colbert, or, no, no, I think I used Lefties, HP, Ice, Willow, Wisprotum, so... I think it could have been Colbert though, but I th I'm pretty sure I used the HP Ice on this team. Hidden Power Will O Wisp. It was offensive. And uh, then I also had Breloom because you gotta have that pressure on stall. And finally, a Super Rachi with Shuka. I forget the coverage. So, yeah, this was a simple offensive team, and it was nice to have it as an option. And it was really threatening, so let's look at the replays. Both from late stages in Smogan Tour. This was against Remedy, great player, one of my favorite black and white players, and no slash in DPP either. So he was running a very bulky Zapdos because it took nothing from my adamant CBA's elf ice punch. 
So uh, here's the great thing about Empoleon. It just switches in and gets a Brox, doesn't care about this. I, In retrospect, nowadays I'd probably run lefties, but back then I'm really glad I had Shuka because, not that, but because Roar again, knowing he's switching, and this comes in, and that happens. If I full paired there, I was going to scream. But yeah, so this was just uh, an example of how nice this team could be. And I should have just Willow was there. Heatran wasn't as big a threat. But this game was really interesting because uh, I go here. Uh, Rowan goes hero mode and pain splits and then eats a crit but manages to get the burn. So that happens. Rotom comes in, Azelf sack, T-Tar Crunch. So the thing is that since my last is Jirachi, then Heatran's actually a massive threat. So what I have to do is go to T-Tar and pursue it for just a little bit. Because it's not, and remember, in 4th gen, Dark is uh, resisted by Steel. So it's not very effective. So, I, like, in theory, I could just, you know, just superpower Crunch or whatever. But I'm trying to get it into Breland Mach Punch range. And I mean, yeah, worst case, I will just, you know, hope for a Fire Blast miss. But that would be stupid. So I decided to pursue, chip it a little, and then suddenly Breloom can... You know, if he locks into Earth Power, then I'm good to go. And if he locks into Fire Blast, then I can live one. And yeah, But the extra chip damage is nice. And uh, he has a Starmie. Especially because I didn't know the last. And... Sorry, my brain's melting. <laughs> So yeah, Chirachi and the extra chip was really big on Heatran. And I just used Psychic, so I guess I didn't have Grass Knot or Thunderbolt. Or I just wanted to hit Heatran harder. And uh, so I was running Grass Knot HP Fire. So I have Akka on that one, that's interesting. And now he's in range of Mach Punch. And I think Titar would have probably lived to Fire Blast. Probably a roll, but the pursuit ended up being pretty big. So I was happy with that. And now for the other one, this was like semi-finals of a tour, I think. And this was for a round-robin finals, the same one as against PNF when he was using the Weavile. So there's CB Azelf, adamant, he's afraid of taunt, so he goes to Jirachi and gets blown the hell up. Easy rocks. He's using this team McMegan used to love to spam in, uh, in tour during the Gliscor Sandvale era. So unfortunately, Roar in the Trapper again, but not the right one. So, but it's okay because there's rocks and Jirachi's dead and Breloom is here to destroy and uh, preserve sleep even. So here's why I had lefties on the Rotom. That's, that reminds me because this stupid fucking Gliscor set was just the devil and uh, HP Ice would actually destroy it and lefties would help it not get worn down. So, and Will-O-Wisp would also annoy uh, Tyranitar, of course. So, and I actually, I forgot I made that play. That was a nice one by me. November 1st, 2015. How time flies. Anyway, so yeah, basically Breloom's a huge threat and then Rotom is able to handle... Oh, he's, he wasn't even running SD. That was another defining feature of McMegan's team. He didn't run SD on Gliscor. Yeah, Pain Split on the thing and now Breloom comes back and is a major, major threat. And it struggles to roost because it becomes super effective, so that's why some Gliscor run Wing Attack. Uh, to deal with Breloom if their team really needs it. So at this point it's looking good. Burned. And Jirachi ends up win. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that team was underappreciated in my memory, but I really liked it. So moving on to Oh yeah, this was just this is going to be another T-Spikes offense team, because god, I love those. Uh, I r wanted to use a Mixed Knight lead, and I wanted to use Raikou as the abuser. Just, you know, partly out of nostalgia. Just for uh, Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver and the T-Spikes offense stuff. But, uh, yeah, E-Speed, because Mixed Knight was a great lead ever since Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver came and gave it to it. And I love, I loved this spread. I uh, ran Quiet and Rash alike, but whichever one you choose, then it's got to be Max Attack, Max Special Attack. Cause, like, what other Pokemon can feasibly do that? So, Rocks, uh, Mid-Game Roserade, and I actually ended up running some pretty cool sets on this. 
I wound up wanting coverage and it ended up being sludge bomb to hit flyers while HP ground would have hit, so like Zapdos and Gyarados and Dragonite, but HP ground to hit Heatran which is really big so I enjoyed that and uh, taunt Will-O-Wisp Gengar to deal with stall teams. Uh, mainly defensive Jirachi who makes subsplit Gengar not a very happy person. Focus Blast and then a Scarf Jirachi which was a great glue. Steel type, fast, revenge killer, tied it all together. Nowadays I'd think about Scarf Metagross. God that would be awesome. That really would. But uh, this was where Raikou goes and I noticed when I was using this team originally that Rain Dance Kingdra destroyed me, so instead of sub on Raikou, I decided to try Protect. And turns out it was great for more than just stalling out rain turns against Kingdra. You know, Scout's Choice, it racks up toxic spikes and uh, sand damage. Like, it helps you drop that T Tar with another T Spike, and then you go from never killing it to always killing it, and you get to put it away. It's just wonderful. So, yeah, this was a great. Uh, great team, lots of fun. And uh, let me find the replay I have for it. About a year after I used it, or uh, made it, then I used it in some stuff. But I, the main appearance it had was when I gave it to my buddy Roscoe, who was on my SPL team, and he used it against the legendary Philip 7086. So uh, here you see the. You actually see everything in this game. You see the response to that. And if Gengar goes down, fine, but then. You sleep the Machamp again, you run Sludge Bomb, lucky crit, but now uh, HP ground. So you still hit T-Tar, although the goal is T-Spikes. And he's getting lucky in this, but I'm going to remind everyone that, uh, looking at the overall matchup, that I think uh, it was the T-Spikes and the options that Roscoe had put him at a massive advantage. Like he's running Physical Offense with T-Spikes against... Physical offense against T-Spikes with Swampert, Scarf Rachi, and even a Protect Kingdra. So here we see uh, locking into Outrage and Jirachi coming in, forcing it out. And what I really liked about Roscoe's play in this game was that uh, he's really leveraging everything he can uh, to get health back on Swampert because he recognizes how big it is. And it doesn't have recovery, but see, back to Jirachi on the Outrage, because it's getting worn down. Doesn't even matter if it eats a Waterfall. It's not that much of a difference. And just U-turns, kills, back to Swampert, getting lefties just from good switches. And uh, that was actually my mistake for making the Dragonite minus defense instead of minus special defense. Got some silly ideas. But it doesn't matter, because he's afraid of E-Speed, and Roscoe predicts a steal and goes for Fire Blast. So... Uh, this shows just how devastating Dragonite is with protection. Protection? Why did I say protection? Because I'm thinking of Raikou. With uh, prediction, rather. I just love protect so much. And anyway, uh, he, Phil's last is a Heracross. Which, you know, cool Pokemon. But with protect Raikou, uh, the crits were made it hard for Phil. I don't mean any disrespect. But with protect Raikou and Swampert and Jirachi, then I think it was oh it wasn't robbery at all. So the um yeah, so the Protect Raikou was devastating here. Raikou versus Hera is always cool points. Anyway, so moving on from that team to that team on to Oh, my uh Suicune stall. I love this team. This was a team that... This was the first usage of Rocks Clef, I believe. I mean, maybe not, like, the first ever Rocks Clef. I, I don't know. I think so. Because I, I just don't... I know I was the first to use Rocks on Clefable. Heist was uh, spamming T-Wave on it. And I just wanted it to rock. And I think this was the first team I made with the Rocks Clefable. I'm pretty confident in that, actually. So, and it still did its job. It didn't need T-Wave. And it was amazing. And... Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite teams. Great color scheme. <laughs> and it used uh, Crocoon for sleep absorb and pressure against other other uh, stall teams. As if you couldn't have enough with Knock Clefable and Tong Gliscor, but still. And it was still 
a huge roadblock against things like Tyranitar and Infernape and Heatran. So you had a lot of great overlapping defense. And look at the colors. Isn't it just wonderful? Um, plus Nido. This was the first uh, Nido. No, no, no. I'm sorry. That was Heists. But uh, yeah, so one of the early Nido clefts, although not the defining ones. So I even led Clefable, I think. So we have a YouTube video for this one. <laughs> Because, um, let's see, where is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, this is Finch's live recording of me versus Toph. I've used the replay on my channel in, um, for the Clefable video, as we see this ad we're about to skip. But, uh, yeah, Finch recorded this one, and you see he had the XY models on. Oh, I led with Nidoqueen on that time, but Suicune comes in to absorb sleep, and Glyphable just annoys everything, and Gliscor is great, and Suicune actually ends up finishing the game. And we'll notice here that Toph's team that he's using here is the team that I made for August against um, Goten, down to the Flash Cannon on Jirachi. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I've faced my own teams quite a lot over the years. All right, so moving on to July 2016. These last two teams were from early 2016. So this next one we're going to July. I made this because I was playing M-Dragon in the World Cup of Pokemon Semi as Tiebreaker. And it was just, you know, I decided to go back to my roots some U-Turn, Zapdos, Offense, and the last Pokemon would be Wish Call Mine Jirachi. Whereas I used it before, but I, you know, we're going with the standard structure, the can't mess up structure. And I should have put Pasha on the T-Tar. I ended up being Lum, like an idiot. But it, it was it was fine. So Scarf Tran uh, and Jirachi is Wish Call Mine, Bold's Absolute Max, and I was thinking about just how nasty the set was against Stall and Offense alike, how it covered Gyarados and CB Outrages and Breloom and everything nasty on Offense, and it was still a massive Stall threat, and it kept my other massive Stall threat alive, Breloom, because when you try to wall Wish Call Mine Jirachi with T-Tar, then you just give Breloom a free wish, and it was just a wonderful Pokemon in general. You heal up T-Tar when Heatran tries to come in on Jirachi, you wish up, T-Tar comes in, back at full health, it's good again. So, same with Starmie, if you want to get a spin-off against Scarf, and you're too weak to take two Fire Blasts, but then you wish up, so it's fine. So, yeah, it was really nasty, and I uh, used this in one of the biggest games of my career that still gives me nightmares to this day. And it still, it starts off pretty well, actually. It, uh, I HP Ice because I was afraid of some super hyper offense Yachi Dragonite, but I get uh, doesn't really matter as I get uh, this. He was going for anti me strategies, which is obvious because his Dragonite was Sleep Talk Choice Band, which wasn't really a thing before that. So I actually kind of credit M Dragon for popularizing that. And he's running Call Michael Fable to handle semi stall, which you you never really see CB Dragonite and Call Michael Fable together, so you can kind of tell what's going on here. But this is why Breloom is so good, because even the Sleep Talk answers to it aren't that nice. And Sleep Talk, when choiced, is only one turn. And here comes the Bold Wish Call Mine Jirachi, which shrugs off CB Outrage like it's nothing, and is ready to uh, uh, pose a massive threat. And this is why I was really proud of the decision to bring this, and to use it, because Wish Call Mine is like, oh, outdated sound. I was like, is it outdated? No, it's still incredibly good. And when I was using it, I was like, this is exactly like it was six years ago. It's inc still incredibly... Like, look at this Earthquake. It bounces off. And I can heal Breloom. I can go to Zapdos. I can do whatever. I can wish. Maybe I was a little too liberal with the wish, but I'm chipping the Bronzong pretty easily. I'm chipping the T-Tar. And I wish... And he's even an Earthquake Scarf Tar. And even that does nothing. So maybe I should have gone to Breloom there. Actually, I definitely should have. I think I was just afraid of a switch, but he was in... But that was a good move on his end. And he goes to Infernape, Zapdos, Thunderbolt. I was uh, expecting Fire Move or Flare Blitz or something, so I get it in here. But playing safe, now I know he's a Scarf Tar. Get on Stone Inch, which would have done nothing. And I hate myself for not Seed Bombing here. But at the same time, no, it was still unforgivable. I was just... I have gone over this game a million times in my head. And, spoiler alert, the only reason this was a quote-unquote bad move was because 
well, stuff happened later, but at the same time, I should have just seed bombed. I really, I really hated myself for that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, at one point, I was thinking, I had a tendency to underestimate people's re over-reliance on Starmie. Like, uh, when Remedy was, I was playing Remedy with the Doug Trio Zapdos team, I was like, there's no way he has Starmie, it's an offensive team, he needs more offense, but then, uh, and I was like, Dragonite and Calmine Clefable? No way. But then I, you know, I regret it now, obviously, but it's still fine. This is why I should have Pasho on the T-Tar. And, uh, so, now Hydro, I go to my Starmie trying to pivot Thunderbolt, and, and said I get hit with a Hydro crit, which was nasty. Luckily, I'd win the tie and just get the, uh, rocks off rather than go to T-Tar, so I think that was a better move. And now, I uh, go to this to finish it off, and Fire Blast, and I'm not risking anything. I'm not risking the miss. I'm going to Breloom, Mach Punch. This comes in again. Luckily, Jirachi's also a pretty nice check to star me. Hello, I like that. Thunderbolt, Bronzong Chip, go to uh, T-Tar, get the rocks back up. Fine. Heatran is a massive threat with Scarf, Fire Blast. Doesn't matter, because even Akka dies, and another Fire Blast miss, and I was screaming mad. And I thought about this so much, I couldn't go to Breloom, because if he just explodes and I lose my Breloom, that is a whole lot worse. I cannot lose the Breloom and end up losing to Clefable. It's just a bad idea. And Heatran was just... I was pretty much game over, I felt. So, uh, he makes a great double switch here, and gets the spin-off, so his Dragonite is... Uh, back again, and I felt I made a very nice play there by he's not quite in Mach Punch range, but if he uh, stays in and eats this Mach Punch, then uh, he will. I uh, no, he was in Mach Punch range with Sand 100%. I don't remember the exact calc, it's been years, but he would then be susceptible to losing to my Wish Call Mind Jirachi. So I thought I made a pretty nice, ballsy plays here. Ballsy play here. He has a free CB Night Switch because rocks are gone. So I go back to Jirachi and get the upper hand, and now, you know, start boosting up, and it's a threat. And then, long story short, I should win this Calm Mind War, like, every single time, and I attack 28 times without a single crit, any of which would have killed, and he eventually gets his, the T-Bolt crit on the 14th turn, and on his 14th attack, so I was pretty steamed about that. And, yeah. I had some choice words because I used to complain a lot in the chat, but uh, which was clearly ridiculous. Even M Dragon said, "Yeah, that was dumb." But yeah, the uh, whole point was that the t first of all, the offensive structure proved to be as resilient and reliable as ever, and Wish Call Mine Jirachi proved to be awesome. So I was really proud of that, at least. All right, so let's go on to the next team, which is from the autumn of 2016 so a couple months after that game and this team i thought was very cool because not only does it have another support in polion which is clearly the best but it also had infernape so infernape and Empoleon on the same team isn't uncommon but it's still cool when it happens so it was a choice band ape and it was Breloom because I was just really trying to lock down stall, you know, and Starmie doesn't want to come in on uh, Empoleon when it's setting up rocks, so it's going to have to deal with rocks when Ape comes in, and nasty, nasty Pokemon. Speaking of annoying stall, then here's a mix gone, surprise, surprise, and then I have a Scarf Rotom. So, uh, and the T-Tar, I think, was Chopple to deal with Gengar, who was definitely a major threat. And that's why it has to be removed. Also helps against Mock Punching Breloom, trying to be safe against Fire Blast. So, Chopple was generally a good item on Tar, and I didn't need the support against uh, Waters that badly, because Empoleon is awesome. So, this was the synergy was just beautiful. And it was, uh, yeah, so this, I, I, I always used a plus special attack on Flygon. I wanted to hit hard with its Draco Meteor. So yeah, Crunch, Pursuit, Fire Blast, Superpower, that was the TR set, and I used HP Ice on Rotom for Dragonite, but yeah, this was a really nasty team, and it was very cool on top of that. Uh, the one replay I have of it is actually not even my own, I gave it to Dr. Zenis, you might remember him as the BP guy, and it was a really threatening, nasty team. And... Yeah, he didn't... Uh... Anyway, so, Empoleon turned us to be awesome, but I, there's one turn in this game that I really want to highlight, other than Fire Blast T-Tar being cool. Uh, uh, 
So there's also the nice part of Rotom on offense being a spin blocker against defense. Even when you're not running spikes, it's sometimes nice. So here's something pretty cool. Selby call mines plus one. And call my Selby runs earth power. And Shuka and Polion, bulky as hell, survives it, roars it out. I thought that was just awesome. And the Feraligator was weird, but... Yeah, okay, so there was that, and that team was cool. So moving on, then I switched up my style a little more uh, for this team I made, just, just to make it. I wanted to run Spectran with Blissey, like this old TV Rocket team I like, but I wanted to change it up. He used double CB Dragons and a Scarf Rachi, which was great, but I had a different idea. I wanted to use the slower pace to make the most use out of Machamp. Who, with uh, Custap, I think, sometimes, but also Lefties was good. I don't remember. And then I had Scarf Rachi. And, uh, Breel No, no, I didn't have Breelum. I had, uh... Zapdos? No, I had CB Knight. My buddy Jirachi had a team after this that had, uh, Zapdos, which was really nice. And I like to use the Scarf Metagross version, which was, uh, I used the original version and then the Scarf Metagross version, but that was a different team. And the Scarf Metagross Dragonite version, which was entirely mine, that was nice. And eventually I changed this to Breloom, and that's what I used in the finals of Smoking Tour 22 against Pasho. The series was over by that point, so some of the plays were a little wilder, mostly on his end, I think. But this was the team I was planning to use, and it was good. Well, let's go faster, because... Yeah, Blissey was awesome. And... CB Dragonite was awesome too. And uh, Blissey is more resilient to CB Tar Pursuit than Clefable is. Anyway, so we're going to keep going because that one just kind of played itself out. Anyway, so yeah, this team was cool, and I like this style a lot. I like it more once I rediscovered the beauty of Scarf Metagross. So, November 2016, this team was made, uh, this team was made in uh, the fall still, and I just ended up tweaking the Machamp to Breloom for the finals, which was in December. But in the fall, then swung into our 22 playoffs, and I had some other teams. And for my round one match against Afugo, what do I end up building? Well, a lot of things. A lot of ambitious things at that. But I ended up going with, you guessed it, T-Spike's offense, because I loved it, and I was feeling a lot of, kind of, unconfident, and then I was testing with Fakes, and he was like, dude, use that, it's great. And sometimes that's all I needed to hear. So, sometimes I just gotta get that battle started. Anyway, this is, uh, Gengar, Zapdos. So, it's like that team I had, uh, before, the one I made with August, except instead of Scarf Rotom, then it's Scarf Tran, because it's just generally the most reliable set. And uh, this allowed me to use Subsplit Gar uh, no, as another T Spike abuser. And then instead of. Then there's Wish Call Mind Jirachi once again. Because as we discovered from the M Dragon battle, then it is amazing and resilient. And another prime abuser keeps everyone healthy. Massive threat, what's not to like? Except the Zapdos was not sub this time around. I figured I would use Agility because it is. It cleans up really hard. And it sets up and it is instant death. One second. Alright, so, yeah, Agility Zapdos is nasty, especially because it gets whole new uses of Roost, like against Scarf Flag on Stone Edge, where it doesn't have to, I mean, normally, like, a bold one can easily stall Scarf without getting crit, is, uh, because, even when it's super effective, but, you know, now against, like, that and faster Ice Beams, like, from Starmie, you can just Agility and Roost and remove the Flying Typing, and it's just really dangerous, so, uh, here's the game I had against Ohm Fuga with it. and uh, HP ground, and here he made the move where he kept in the sleeping Roserade 
against my unrevealed Heatran set, which re that really pissed me off, but I figured if he's going to do that, then he's going to do something that I can use to my advantage later. And uh, here's HP Fire Gengar, which I thought was pretty cool. He lets his Roserade go, and rocks, and still in it, even though Roserade doesn't really do much, which, you know, sucks. But he's using this uh, Ojama team, and I bring it down and he lets Heatran go, which is huge for the Wish Call Mine Jirachi. And uh, now we see a uh, Rotom on Agility Zapdos War, and Agility also means that Zapdos can afford to invest into its bulk, which is great. How? M oh no, that's not the remix place. How much time do I have left on that? Jesus, I r burned through that again too. Uh, let's use another Sinnoh one because this one looks like it's two hours. So if I blow through this one, then I've just really been going on too long. Anyway, so we're engaging in this. Rotomon, where Zapdos' pressure is burning through Shadow Balls, so he's got a Charge Beam and look for boost, and I'm getting a little lucky here, but the whole point was to bring it down, bring the Pert down with Scarf Tran, and I don't, that crit did not matter. I spent a lot of time calcing and figuring it out, but I think I had that game, that game locked down, so some people took it the wrong way as, oh, he crits to win, but I really do not believe that was the case with a bold Jirachi against those guys and Swampert, then absolutely not. Because Psychic 2 KO'd the Pert from that point too, so. Yeah, uh, next team. Now this was inspired. This team is actual hot, hot heat. Now uh, I was playing Jimmy Turtwig, who's thoroughly no-nonsense, and I enjoy that because it means I can just make my teams the way I like them. No-nonsense. Now this might seem like nonsense, but it's not because good offense, good defensive core, and a lot of good defensive core, a lot of offense of synergy. So Scarf Infernape, four attack Heatran. So you're avenging stuff, you're cleaning stuff up, and you're breaking through stuff with ease. And uh, Pert gets the rocks. Skarmory is great. CB Tar is nasty. I think this was where we were using. I was using the Lefties Wisp HP Ice Rotom. Yes, and this wound up being one of my favorite, not only one of my favorite teams of all time, I mean, nowadays I would have to tweak the hell out of it because of the lack of water resistance, but overall, I just loved the fact that I was just able to make this and use it and have it succeed, and uh, after that, then I had one of my favorite DPP battles ever, so we get to click on it now, and I really recommend watching this one on your own and analyzing it in every area. So, uh, yeah, he switches out of the ape lead because Scarf Ape can run HP Ice, get up rocks, here comes Starmie. EQ crit is nice, but Swampert is notorious for being able to one-on-one -on -one Starmie. I make a dumb move by going to Rotom and not T-Tar. <coughs> Excuse. Uh, I get that, and now I get my four attack Heatran in and ready to cause a lot of ruckus. Starmie can't handle it, it's Pasho as HP Grass. Flygon comes in, scares it out, but gets chipped by HP Grass. Uh, and I go to Rotom. But every time Heatran comes in, massive, massive threat. Now I got a problem against the uh, CB Tar, but I managed to get that in. And now I go to T Tar as he goes Zapdos, and massive CB Crunch. Jirachi scares out, goes back. To, he goes back to T Tar. Heatran comes in. I got to decide, you know what? I think my Poison Swampert is less valuable. I don't want to risk Skarm to a Stone Edge, so I really should have been going to my T-Tar to get rid of his Starmie. It was a little short-sighted of me, but and maybe been a little more aggressive here, but it was difficult because he makes a great move to limit the threat that my uh, Heatran is causing, and I actually give him first blood, give it to him a little too easily. Luckily, his Heatran's getting chipped a little bit, but he's uh, not able, he's not calling that one. And now I he has to sack his Jirachi, so Heatran causing a lot of havoc. What was great about this was that at the time that Scarftran was by far the most popular and most effective on average um, uh, Celebi set. No, why am I saying Celebi? Jesus Christ, sorry. Uh, Heatran set. But so to see 4 attack putting in such work was just wondrous. And also his Spadef set was also uh, similarly dangerous. So, you know, and now I get a not so good Whirlwind. And, you know, I'm simplifying, but luckily, CB Stone Edge claims he decides to sack Heatran. This comes in, and now it is, here comes a uh, rather 
this is one of my favorite moves where I so Flygon survives an HP grass but not and usually a fire blast too from timid heatran but you know in what universe am I going for fire blast because I have to survive and kill the starmie but I go for fire blast and uh, kill the flygon because I am modest as he uh, escapes from the HP grass and I was really proud of that one well at the time I was you know sweating bullets and just trying to stay alive but afterwards I was pretty proud of that and so uh, I end up going to Skarm, and luckily I managed to lay down a spike to make the Infernape threat just a little more feasible. And since my Skarmory, which is speed crept, and my CB Tar are the same speed, I know my CB Tar is going to outspeed his. So I get to go to him, force another KO, and now uh, he he has to he can recover, but he can also die to Stone Edge. So I'm expecting him to Hydro and just attack. And it'll kill me through Pasho, which is fine. And now I get to go to Infernape and U-turn and KO. Because if and because even if he goes to Zapdos, then it's the same thing. It's coming down to Zapdos versus Titar. The only difference here is that I can CB Crunch and finish it off with close combat and not risking that. So that was one of my favorite DPP games of all time, and I'm always happy to... You know, give it a little plug, even though I messed up a little. But, you know, anyone who tells you they played perfectly in a game is usually, or let me say, always full of shit. There's never anything you never could have done better. And I really dislike people who say that. I mean, sure, sometimes everything works out, but yeah. Uh, that doesn't stop it from being a great game, though. Uh, so yeah, that was the semis. Now, early 2017, I had this Sash... I don't remember when exactly I built it, but I had this Sash T-Tar team lying around, and it was fun. And it was inspired by Calling, although I think it was a lot more overall reliable. And uh, more Scarf Tran, like I said, reliable set. And uh, it had some cool sets. It has Breloom, and... Uh, they had a physical Stealth Rock Jirachi, so the Iron Head Body Slammer we are familiar with. It also had this Gyarados set, which I thought was pretty cool. It was uh, DD Resto Chesto to give it kind of two lives at checking stuff, while it's still an offensive menace, and Chesto is still useful defensively for uh, Breloom Spore. So uh, there's that. And then the last Pokemon was this menace of a set that I believe Bada Bing came up with. Or he just mentioned the coverage in passing and then I gave it a try. And it's uh, this monstrosity. It is brutal. So uh, we have a game of when I gave it to Roscoe to use in SPL. And Sash Tar is great because it gets the Fire Blast Metagross. I mean, it gets lucky with the break the Aka, which, you know, helps, and he gets lucky to get put on the defensive, but uh, goes to Jirachi, fakes Thunderbolt, gets to Stealth Rock, gets to Iron Head, and here's Gyarados checking stuff, he has to sack, and he crits the, uh, the Hydro, so thank God for the Sash, but, you know, all's fair, uh, who knows how that would have gone without the thing, I think he sacks uh, Titar to the Starmie and then revenges with um, Jirachi, or lives the Ice Beam at full health with Breloom and puts that kind of pressure on, so. Uh, pivots into Bullet Punch. And was the T-Tar faster? Yeah, it was. So, Stealth Rock back to Jirachi, and Metagross blows up. And now here comes the awesome part. Gyarados is a good check to Gliscor, but it gets Thunder Fanged. And now a bunch of sacks. Now T-Tar is a threat. And there's no way that uh, Glisker gets to SD as Ape dies to Sand, and there's no way that there's something that's going to beat both. I mean, Trick Room Bronzong, in theory, could beat both this Glisker and Scarf Tran, but they could also switch around it, in theory. So, it would it's Lucario and win. So, uh, that, was a, and that was an example of how that team is meant to function. So, the next team we have on our hands is another offensive team, you know, another Sash uh, lead. Another, uh, and another Empoleon, actually, because, so, we've see some themes in this video. Semi-stall stuff, lead Empoleon, 
and uh, Toxic Spike's offense. So Empoleon lead, uh, and uh, then four attack Heatran. So the theme of the team was just bruising, you know, dish taking hits and dishing back KOs. So I, f I think the oh, and there were lots of berries. Like Heatran was one of these two was Pasho, the other was Chopple. I forget which was which. I know the Drachi was Shuka. Then there's a Didi Gera and a Wisping Scarf Rotom to round it out. And uh, the team was on the imperfect side, but it was also really strong. And uh, so it was able to just purely out offense opposing teams because it could take the right hit and then deal back a KO, like I just mentioned. So uh, I gave this to Roscoe to use against Osgood in the same SPL. And see, switching out of that. Then Jirachi gets up rocks on the defensive Jirachi. Paralysis. Offense, Jirachi has this hard time staving off Empoleon when paired. See, uh, Sash acts like a berry in the sense that it lets it take that hit and respond back with a KO. Willowis on Scarf Rotom is nice for Hippo and yeah. So uh, I think was this, no yeah this was the Choppeltar I'm remembering now so. See, that's what Chapel Tar is for. Gengar and also Mach Punch Breloom. And... Yeah, so this was the Shuka Jirachi. And... Yeah, so there was that. That was another fun one. And... Oh, here's a team that any viewer of Joey's is intimately familiar with that I built around here. And... Uh, he loves a lot. So it's just an offensive Metagross lead, and then, so you try to control the game as much as possible. You open up great with Metagross, who is famous at messing up opposing leads. Then you use this offensive, uh, special attacking Stealth Rock Jirachi, which is also really good at doing that. And then you have Gengar for other offense, you have Kingdra as a setup sweeper, you have Tyranitar with a choice band if anything tries to get too bulky, and at the end of the game you clean up with Scarf and Fernape. Uh, one of my favorite teams. Uh, nowadays, I would have to tweak the sets like hell, but I, I really loved the idea and how it came together, and it was really fierce, and that's, uh, why, Joe, uh, that's why Joey likes it so much. So, uh, that's that one. Let's see, moving on. Uh, quick mention to the Zapdos, Starmie, Breloom, Titar, Heatran structure, because I tried that team with a Raikou last. Well, not, not a last, I used a lead Raikou, and ended up cleaning up with Agility Zapdos, and that was pretty fun. Alright, so now a team that has shaped modern DPP strongly. This is, a this is a team that will actually get its own video, and it's called I Crawled, and most people know it as BKC Protect Stall, and while there's a lot of variations, a lot of things you can do, I've tried everything I can think of. This is the basic idea, and uh, Seismic Soft, Knock, and then Protect, whatever. Scarf Rotom, Heat, because I like Overheat on it. And then Jirachi with Iron Head. Well, the original set was actually Thunder HP Ground with Sub, uh, because that owns Heatran and Skarmory. But then I switched over to Body Slam Fire Bunch, and then I switched from Substitute to Protect, which, you know, gave the team four Protects and uh, made it really, really nasty. And it's an offensive protect set with Fire Punch, which is an, which prior to that was never used on Jirachi, so that was new. Now, I mean, this team will get its own video in the future, and it'll be in-depth, but the first time it was used on the big stage was when I gave it to Shake for World Cup against X-Ray, and it was very, uh, still a very rough variant. I think I didn't, I had Pasho on the T-Tar, uh, the Clef had Knockoff, but the idea was very much the same. And Clefable just dumpstered stuff. Oh, I, yeah, I even had Pursuit on the T-Tar with Pasho, so... Yeah, uh... Yeah, I think I, I used to run... Oh, I don't, I don't even remember what I used to run, but the Heatran... The Jirachi definitely had Thunder... Did, I don't think the Jirachi even came out, honestly. 
And here we see uh, Extra is using the Osgood team. And Subra Zapdos, Nidoqueen, Bronzong, similar idea to the old uh, Bombastone team, except Zapdos is more overall reliable. So I like that. And uh, yeah, I used to. Yeah, Drush doesn't even come out, but it was Thunder HP Ground. So yeah, that was the world debut on July 9th, 2017. Although I think I had been using it, for, who knows. Anyway, so yeah, there's that one. That had to be mentioned. Uh, here's one of my favorite balance teams. Uh, it's inspired by Zac 91s old one, except and I, it's more offensive because it's got Specs Tran, who is the most fun thing ever, because it destroys... And uh, it's got the awesome Stealth Rock Celebi set, which we mentioned earlier. And it keeps up rocks on Heatran? Or not Heatran, sorry, Starmie. And it checks Suicune really well, so you don't have to worry about that with something else. And it makes switching into Heatran even more impossible if you're dealing with Starmie as well. But the nice thing about this team, well, you've also got the... Offensive, defensive use of tr CB Tar. God, I love CB Tar. And Scarf Jirachi. I should really try this with Scarf Metagross. It'd be nice. Uh, but the last is Gliscor to really lock down stall. And what Celebi does is offer the hardest prelim count. Well, one of the hardest prelim counters. Especially because Leaf Storm with Modest fends off Pursuit Tar really hard. It, it is destruction. And it lets you run a Gliscor that is walled by Breloom, and better against literally everything else. Well, not one-on-one -on -one against Dragonite, but that's why you have a Scarf, Ice Punch, Jirachi. So, uh, yeah, and Knockoff is just incredibly irritating against Waters, Clefable, even getting rid of, I don't know, Dragonite CB or Life Orb so you can live one of its hits. So yeah, this is one of my favorite teams to use. Uh, let's see... Oh, here's a fun one. Now, you notice I use a lot of T-Tar, and that's because Zapdos is a pain. And uh, I wanted to make a team without T-Tar. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to use CB Swampert, which is a massive... Fa this was around the time where CB Pert started showing itself as the metagame threat that it is. And CB Pert. And that lets you run a Zapdos check that is offensive. Unlike, you know, like defensive Swamp Bird is also a good Zapdos check, but it's not really a threat. So then you got your Scarf Flag on, you always run Shiny, always run Adamant. And uh, Starmie, and Breloom, fairly by the numbers, but it was also nice because we got to run, I think Mail uh, instructed me to run more SPDF on this. I wanted to run a faster set. But the nice thing here was that, you know, Rocks, Body Slam, Jirachi, the last Pokemon is Dragonite. So this was before Latias was reintroduced to the tier. Don't worry, I'll mention it when we get there. So you get two Dragons and two Choice Banders, and plus, CB Pert destroys every switch in, and then if their response is Breloom, then you go to your CB Knight and you sleep talk, uh, you absorb it, and you threaten another CB attack. So it's just constant, even when they respond with sleep, just constant, constant death. Now, I like a slow, bulky CB Knight. So that's my preference. I like it speeding Empoleon. So yeah, you get, and then you got the double dragon cleanup, and Roscoe used this against Tama and SPL, and it was a really great game. And, yeah, so, see, there's the Dragonite outspeeding the, uh, or, sorry, absorbing the Roserade. I'm losing my vocab. And, uh, Tom was running a Wish Call Mine Protect Jirachi in this game. He was running one of those T-Spike offense... T-Spike stalls, but with a lead Sash Roserade, and he's got a Suicune there, and a Magnezone, which is an unusual choice. So Wish Call Mind, but Psychic, which Wish Call Mind, Psychic Protect, which is pretty nice when you've got T-Spikes to wear down T-Tar. So. Uh, and here we see Sleep Talk Dragonite, which was not yet expected. Also, first of all, we see the bulk on CB Knight, let it survive Magnezone Explosion and Sand, and then the bulk on it 
or the sleep talk on it destroy the Jirachi. And although the Jirachi uh, gets to pass the wish to Suicune because it died instantly, then it's neutered and then Breloom survives Ice Beam at full, so... And even though Bronzong wakes up early and puts a dent into it, then it's not going to be enough to stave off the CB Pert, so... Off very super awesome team. And it was... I was glad because sometimes I felt like, man, can you ever make a team without T-Tar? Uh, yeah. Alright, so moving on to our next team. Oh, this was for Roscoe's game against Night Fox, and I wanted to make something really, really brutal. As in, uh, like, just constant screaming, powerful offense. So, Explosion, I think it had Thunder Wave and Taunt. Just... So it was the Metagross Machamp idea, but with Azelf, like what a Heist was doing. And, uh, oh, except, I take that back, because it was Machamp with rocks and ideally sand up, so, which makes it so much more dangerous. Now, ideally, you get rocks with T-Tar, so you have rocks and sand all in one, you don't have to wait, and that makes Machamp a lot more dangerous. But he doesn't, uh, but, you know, Azelf starts off the game better, and then you can use mid-game T-Tar's defensive utility, of course. And then uh, Rotom to switch into fighting moves, which are used in Revenge often, and Kingdra to live any hit and be able to take something back. But the kicker here was the Metagross, which was Agility, which just mows down offense like little else. And uh, the game Roscoe had against Night Fox was pretty friggin' fast. As Azelf against Lead Raikou, which doesn't want a T-Wave because it might be Lum. Gets rocks, er, sorry, gets rocks, and then Titari's Shadow Balls, and barely lives, but I think it's CB Tar. Yeah, that, that was CB. And uh, now Machamp comes into Titar for more death. Gyarados with rocks and sand up, yikes. And you now Stone Edge to finish it off. It's Lum, so it even lives a Breloom, uh, so it, it doesn't get spored by Breloom, and it's fast. Fast Machamp screws over a lot of stuff like Slow Breloom. And even if it's super powered, then that was one thing. But the thing is that as soon as Gengar comes in, Metagross is always going to Agility and Sweep. So, plus Kingdra was a threat too at that point. So, that was simple. But yeah, that was the idea of that team. I had a lot of fun using that uh, in the months after. So, uh, next up, we're at the. We're leaning to the end here. So. Uh, okay, I have a fun one. This is Drag Mag. Uh, with a Scarf Flygon lead. And I, I made this for the tournament where Latios was being tested in OU. And uh, I was playing Finch in the semis. And I was like, alright, Finch is gonna, you know, counter style just a little bit. So I'll switch up, because I've been spamming my stall team. Uh, kind of to prove a point that you know, Latios doesn't change anything. This team is still going to be great. So, uh, yeah, here's Zone. I forget the set I ran on it. Uh, here's Tar for Latios checking and Rocks and Crunch and Pursuit. I think I had Custap on it. And uh, then Mamoswine because Anti-Dragon. And, you know, with Magnezone, then it's perfect, especially because Magnet Rise, Magnezone owns Bronzong, and everyone was like, oh, we'll use Bronzong because it's a Latias counter that avoids Dugtrio and can Earthquake Magnezone. So, you know, Magnet Rise, Magnezone in response to that, especially because Zone can often live in Earthquake with good investment. So, and then the last, of course, Latias with Choice Specs, which didn't used to run Sleep Talk back in the day, but Finch and I both used it against each other because... You know, Sleep Talk Latios was taking over black and white, and there's no reason not to use it when Breloom is such a threat in DPP. So here is the replay. And uh, I figured Finch is not the kind of guy to outrage on the first turn so I can earth or so I can U-turn. Turns out he's running a mix lead because Mix Flygon does annoy most of my teams. It's not a very traditional lead at all. I mean, Scarf Gone is barely a tradition, is barely a lead to begin with, but Mix, I only ever saw M-Dragon use, but it's 
And that was like in a friendly once, so it's not really a thing, but he was just gunning for my Spectran balance team and the stall team, so I just... Uh, yeah, I think he expected me to switch, and I just wanted to bullet punch it into Oblivion, and Titar went down, so... So, and I get lucky with a Hydro Miss. And, uh, yeah, Finch was not around in DPP when Band Scizor was the standard, which is why I didn't expect it. And there's the Mac... Oh, sorry, I skipped through it. So here's Bronzong, and, uh, here's the Magnet Rise Magnazone to own the Bronzong. And if you get exploded on, it's fine. It's, it's like an advance when you... If Metagross explodes on your Magneton, that's totally fine. Anyway, so, here's Mamo. Here's Tar, which eats... Gets up rocks, and you know, like I uh, spam rocks just to keep them up against Bronzong. But yeah, it was cussed up there, and Mammoth Swine cleans up, which is always a sight to see. All right, we're down to our final team, and it is this is from the fall of 2018, and we're gonna jump uh, about a year and a half in advance, and because I just felt. Uh, that everything else just felt uninspired, and luckily we don't even have to look further because this is the team that I felt was my favorite in a while because it's it's an idea taken to its most extreme, and it doesn't bother trying to patch things up with you know defense or uh, with more defense or it, it's just taking its offensive synergy to the furthest extreme possible. And it, the synergy is everywhere, it's fast, it's it's guaranteed kills all over the place, and I just love it. And we'll just uh, go to our final replay, which is Baihai versus Vey in this past season of SPL. Now, I think originally the Kingdra was timid max speed, but the whole idea of spec Latias, bulky spec Latias lead was an idea of mine from... Uh, the previous year, 2019, and I was like, you know what, same idea, I'll take it. Except this one wasn't timid, I should have made it that, but... Uh, yeah. So... Yeah, he was leading Specs King Drew. Specs King Drew lead versus Specs Laudias lead. You love DPP sometimes. Anyway, so the idea being just the whole overwhelming Calm Mind Clef's counters with the most direct use of force. You use Latias almost as a suicide lead to just bring him in and get him, get him dug, get him worn down. Sometimes if it's T-Tar, you even beat it yourself because it, uh, it's modest and it's bulky. So you, can, you don't have to be afraid of sacrificing stuff because you're playing such an aggressive game toward the Calm Mind Clef ending, as we see here, as Clef destroys absolutely everything. So, yeah. Doug didn't even Doug the Titar. Or the Jirachi, and it was... So yeah, uh, that was that's my favorite in a while, and I'm sure I have others, but, you know, this was long enough as is. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this journey of nostalgia spanning 11 frigging years. And there are more, but, uh, yeah. Next time I'll go through advance, which will be shorter, but... Yeah, DVP was, uh, is particularly special in my heart. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you next time.